Another Power 5 opponent, this one on the road, and another chance to prove where they might belong at the end of the season. Kessman on the approach. And that ball is flying away. So a touchback will get the ball into the hands of the quarterback, Dylan Gabriel. He's the freshman out of Mililani High School in Hawaii. And he takes over for Brandon Wimbush, who initially got some reps at the quarterback position this year. We may see Wimbush. We may see Daryl Mack as well, who closed the season last year after the injury to Mackenzie Milton, who has been a major mentor from the same high school as Dylan Gabriel. Well, he took over for Milton in high school and ironically comes here and takes over for him as well after having said no to USC in Georgia and choosing UCF. Originally an Army commit, then the offers started to flow as UCF will try to establish the run game, but everything circles around Gabriel and his handling of maybe the toughest defense he's going to see. Yeah, I, I think that's right, and he is a guy who loves to throw the deep ball and throws it very well. They use the running backs in the pass game, but McCray is absolutely swallowed up by the Florida transfer, Kylan Johnson. Yeah, Johnson is a fast linebacker, as you mentioned, from Florida. They lost three starting linebackers from last season, and he stepped right in to fill a need. Now, you see, you put him in a third and long, it slows the pace down a little bit. They want to be certain about the formation and what they're getting in, and now you've got Pitt getting settled and lined up. Thumbs up part of the play call. We'll see if the thumb stays up on third and long and down goes Gabriel. Another sack for the pit defense. This is Patrick Jones. Yeah, that Patrick Jones inside again. Get him into third down and then use your pressure inside. Gabriel, who was very comfortable last week against Stanford, not comfortable at all here. And that time you had a back, McCray, trying to handle that big Jones. 260 pounds that doesn't go work out too well did not go so hot the chance of overrated have started for the first time in game but they were happening pregame here at Heinz Field and you don't know if you want to poke the bear as French is out of bounds they've blown it dead for Maurice French and Kenny Pickett junior quarterback for Pitt which has been a school that's provided some outstanding quarterbacks Pickett's been very accurate the last couple of weeks but he hasn't had the big play feeder that maybe you'd like well I think that's right and there's also a certain amount of pressure on him and also on the offensive coordinator coach Whipple because they really haven't scored much they haven't done much on offense and haven't really picked up you know the defense at all but he's completing 69 percent of his passes but he wants to get his team into the end zone more. You know, we saw last night talking to the UCF players, they have a chip on their shoulder looking for some respect, maybe not outwardly, but Kenny Pickett's a very competitive young man as well. He played baseball and basketball and football all in high school. He's out of New Jersey and says he still misses baseball some. And the Pirates play just down the road if he wanted to get a little tour every Taking once game, and again. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. former yeah. shortstop. Well, the cool thing is that having played baseball and been an infielder, it helps him throwing on the move. Play action for Pickett. He goes down the middle and he's got a first down. It's Taysier Mack, who had an outstanding game against Penn State with 12 catches. A nice, clean pocket. Get your quarterback some confidence. The play action and then bring Mack right back in front of him. Easy throw, easy read. A.J. Davis is the tailback. He's used pretty often in the passing game as well. This is on the ground, and Davis picks his way into plus territory. That's a strong start for Pitt. Well, Stanford started strong, too. Stanford was able to run the ball against UCF, but because their offense started to dominate, it took Stanford out of the rushing attack. So Pitt believes that they can run, as Stanford did, until the game got away from them. Got Jimmy Morrissey, the anchor of this line for Pittsburgh. Third team all ACC last year in his 27th start, and he leads the way for a first down run. Pitt has not been a juggernaut in the first quarter so far this year. Yeah, they haven't started fast at all. At one and two with a conference loss already to Virginia in the opener. 
Pickett made some pretty good decisions against Penn State last week on when to talk. There he gets a couple of yards. You know, generally you need your quarterback to escape the pocket three, four, five times a game to pick up a first down or get you something. Here's the walkover that Quint was talking about. Instead of standing out there looking for the signal, he walks over and talks to his coordinator. Well, he's able to process the entire play. There's also some extra dialogue where Coach Whipple will say, hey, watch the safety. It's, if it's not there, check it down. And it allows the, the young quarterback to, to mentally process the play fully. Every once in a while, you should come up to the booth so we can make eye contact with you as well, Quint, just if the system works like that. We'll dump off to set up third down and medium, but that's the point. I mean, Mark Whipple's been criticized a little bit for it being somewhat antiquated, but he feels like with a new quarterback, he can get a message just in the eye contact. Well, it's a new offense. He's still learning it. He's a young quarterback, so he wants as much hands-on time with him as he can get. Here's a big third down for them because you're in UCF territory. He looked off the tailback Carter and fires for Mack again. It's a first down for Pitt just outside the 30. How about the patience in the pocket? He gets a clean pocket. He knows that his reads are to the middle and left, and he waits for Mack to come across. As you mentioned, look to the tailback and just read off of that defender. Defender goes outside. He throws inside to Mack. First drive for Pitt. Pickett climbing in the pocket, and he airmails one. We saw that a couple times on tape last week as a flag has come in. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the field. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Yeah, the substitution issue. Usually it's UCF getting the other team on that. There are a couple guys on the sideline still as the snap came in just at the edge of the field of play. They have a tight end in the backfield. This is essentially a two back set. Let's drag the tight end as this goes to Matthews. Aaron Matthews and Nehemiah job inside the five yard line. That was pretty. Well-designed play. They go Max Pro here and just bring Matthews across underneath as if he's a tight end. And a little athleticism at the end there. Same high school as Tyler Boyd, who had that sort of athleticism as well. They watched him for a while at Pitt. A.J. Davis picking his way, crashing down the door. Is he in? Is the question? Yes. Touchdown, Pitt. Good time for their first first quarter touchdown. Well, it's a counter play. Tremendous black by Gabe Hoy coming around and allowing Davis to get into the end zone. So the rushing attack that they thought they could open with has been there so far with the help of a big play of catch and run by Matthews. They're going to review this. The cynical Pitt fan out in our viewing audience says, why didn't they run that play <laughs> with 4.59 to go last week against Penn State? Oh, another topic of conversation and Narduzzi's decision to kick the field goal. Well, let's focus on this one here. Is there a knee down or a body part down before the ball crosses the plane? Well, he's clearly across the plane there. Remember, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn a call. And you start with the call on the field, which was touchdown. So is there enough to overturn here? You know, I got nothing there from that angle that tells me without doubt that he didn't get into the end zone. And it's tough to tell from behind as well where the ball is. His entire upper body yeah. is across the goal line. It appears as some part of the body part goes down, but it's hard to tell or see when anything is down. Yeah, the question is, you know, with the body, it's like twister. Yeah, it is. This is uh, <laughs> left knee After yellow. The, review, the ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown for Pitt. Yeah, stands not confirmed, right. and that's the right call for sure. Yeah. I didn't realize you played twister. Uh, I was the play-by-play -play announcer oh, for twister. That's as far smart. as. Yeah. Oh, I hope you got paid for that. Yeah, dexterity is not my top talent. Yeah, you don't need dexterity <laughs> for twister. You just 
step here, step there, fall down. I knew the colors well, and the left <laughs> and right was fine. Extra point for Kessman. Which do you prefer? Is it the high road or the low road? Rod Gilmore, because of this drive, we saw both for the Panthers. Yeah, and, and they mixed it well. You know, they got a nice pass, but how about going up and over? That works too. Matthews setting up the touchdown for Mr. Davis. Pitt is up. Hugh Duck. Who are the quarterback and head coach of the last team to beat UCF in the regular season? It's been a long time. Can you reach that far back in your memory bank to figure out what the answer is? It's a two-part question. We'll give you no credit for half. Do I get to participate? I'll, be, I'll bet you 25 bucks. Well, <laughs> just a little rich for my blood. <laughs> Dinner was expensive last night. Uh, our answer, our Aflac trivia answer. You have it? Yeah. You got it? Who is it? I'm thinking Willie Taggart yep. at USF, and I think his quarterback was Flowers. It was. Quentin Flowers. All right. War for I-4. Quentin Flowers, Willie Taggart, your correct answer. It's all the way back November 26th of 2016, so can A.J. Davis and Pitt be that next team to do it? Will Kenny Pickett be that quarterback? We'll find out along with you. Think about that. They haven't lost a regular season game since 2016. It, it, it's crazy. It's a remarkable run, and they've done it with two separate head coaches as well. So there's Gabe Davis, who doesn't have the same free roaming room as he did early against Stanford last week. Yeah, last week Stanford was outgunned, outmanned, outnumbered. You think they're outplanned? They too? were outplanned yeah. too. Second down and into double coverage and incomplete. You know, oh, flag comes in late, late marker, and the crowd revolts. Charles Lamartina, our referee with the call. It goes on Alexander, and it's a holding call. Yeah, the crowd thought it was a pass interference call down the field, but not it. It's Alexander with the hold early on. This game could feature a handful of pass interference calls as both teams like to play press coverage on the outside. A lot of mutual combat references from our resident DB in the booth, I feel like, are coming. We'll find out. They've got some speed at the running back spot. Adrian Killens breaking free and a shoestring tackle for Hamlin. Maybe saved a touchdown. This is just a counter run. One of their top plays. They've got athletic linemen. They pull them from right to left and they get it set up nicely. Killens is senior, a 36 yard hit. This one flutters and is intercepted. Picked up by Phil. Uh, they've been harassing Gil, uh, Gabriel here for the pick. Wow. Uh, Phil Campbell, the third, his first career interception as well. And so Pitt gets the ball back after a march down the field, culminating in a Davis touchdown on their opening drive. The Panthers trying to be the team to shock UCF. Kenny Pickett to throw. Pickett down the middle and a jumping grab for Matt. Now they just caught him sitting in a soft two deep zone. And Mac found that soft spot right over the middle. Still great protection as well. Down the sideline, Matt got a hand on it. And incomplete. So the first incompletion today for Kenny Pickett, who opened five for five. Yeah, we should point out that Trey Tipton is not playing today for Pitt, which puts a little bit more pressure on Matt to produce. And Randy Shannon told us yesterday that his number one goal was to limit Mac in touches. So far, 
unsuccessful. Mack has been a big part of this offense. Seen a bunch of targets so far as Pickett turns it upfield. That'll set up a third down and medium. Eric Mitchell, the junior linebacker, with the stop on Pickett. You know, Pitt has not run the ball very well this season so far. 2.9 yards per, per attempt. We expect to see them compensate by throwing short passes, some screen passes, getting their back out of the backfield a bit. Vincent Davis is the back right now, the freshman who scored last week. This is Maurice French up the sideline trying to shake the tackle and he stepped out of bounds. This is a guy they want to see the ball at least 10 times. French's first touch. Yeah, he just comes from the right side to the left and he kind of gets a little bit of a pick, a little help from the player there and all of a sudden he's wide open. But that's just a little pick play, a little rub off in the middle and French is all alone. We enjoyed our time this week with Maurice French, who was a punter in high school in large part because he could break down a fourth down play and run. He said, I was free yards, man. <laughs> Got to the point where he never punted. He's just booking it away. First down for Pickett going through the progressions. Got spun around into a big hit. Pickett gets dropped. Couldn't like that was Landon Woodson, the richer freshman who got to him. Now the timing is off. The ball should have been out before then. And he didn't let it go. And that gave Woodson time to come around and make the play. Gilliard was in first. You see the tackles for loss per game leading the FBS. They've done a great job of creating turnovers as well under Randy Shannon. They were sixth in the nation last year. Pick it on the run. Can he pick it into open space? And he's got a first down. Into the studio, Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Jason. This big play update is brought to you by Carmex, number eight, Auburn, at number 17, Texas A&M. Anthony Schwartz on the reverse, the former track star showing off his turbo speed. 57 yards for the score. Tigers up 7-0 in the first. Jason, Rob, back to you. That is a big weapon for yeah. Auburn. Schwartz back and yeah. healthy. Pick it to the sideline and incomplete for yeah. Davis. Well, Cassidy's going to have to tell us where she would rank UCF right now since uh, the debate rages on. She well, might as well weigh in. Everybody's got an opinion, but we were talking about it before the game. For UCF, uh, a win may not be enough in the eyes of some committee members because they only have a couple of power five opponents on their schedule whether that's fair or not you can debate well we should note that they've been undefeated two years in a row after the regular season they were ranked 12th at the end of the season in 2017 and eighth last year Carter is dropped it's going to be third down I, I feel like i'm the rare person who's of the opinion that if you just win all of your games you should be in the college football playoff but it's more elaborate than that yeah as we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it as it goes along here antoine collier the safety is the one that's down the junior out of miami it'll be third down for pitt when we come back and we'll check on collier last week against stanford and as he went to the sideline that's the shoulder he was favoring, and that's the shoulder they were working on. So it may simply be a re-injury for Collier. Jordan Hayes has come in for him at safety, and UCF's defense has already played a lot backed up in its own territory. 14 plays run in UCF real estate. Yeah, big third down here for Pitt. Mack is down here at the bottom. Pick it incomplete. He wanted Butler Jenkins, a sophomore, Dontavious Butler Jenkins, and maybe field goal time for Pitt. Yeah, I think Pitt sort of outsmarted themselves that time. They had Mack in a one on one situation at the bottom of the field, and the way he's been hurting UCF, that would have been Mack time. That would have been the right time to look for him. So Kessman, who has a major leg, but missed from 19 on the hash mark late last week against Penn State in a one score game. Has a chance to make it a two score game here, and he missed it wide. Shades of last week. 
So Kessman, who was 13 out of 17 last year, has already missed four times this season. Well, and the disappointing thing, if you're a Pitt fan, is that you've dominated this first quarter. You have a chance to tack on points. And for all that you've done, you're just one play ahead, one possession ahead of UCF. And the Knights know that because that was a big spark as they make a quarterback change to start this drive. Yeah, Brandon Wimbush Q has come in. He's more of the runner. He's the Notre Dame transfer. Yeah, we should point out this was planned. This was not necessarily in response to the play by uh, Gabriel. Flag comes in. Wimbush going to lose yards on his first carry. Kylan Johnson got the hit and we'll check the marker. Well, there you have the answer. Yeah, this is as bad a start as I've seen for UCF in a couple years. Holding offense number 65. Penalty is declined. It is second down. It's on the reliable guard, Cole Schneider. Even the game they lost last year in the bowl game, they were up early on LSU. Well, think about their start. They had a sack, first drive, a pick, and then they start this third series with a holding call. Gabriel is now back in the ball game. So one play for Wimbush on the third pit tackle for loss already in the first quarter. Not even 10 minutes in. Drop on the yeah. screen for Hescock, the Wisconsin transfer, and he gets doused. Cam Bright blew it up. Right now, Pitt defensively knows the playbook for UCF. They're a step ahead of him. Randy Bates, the defensive coordinator, has to be elated so far. It is loud in here. Otis Anderson crashing a couple yards short of the first down marker. So Pitt holds the line one more time. Well, the key so far for Pitt has been getting a negative play on first or second down, a tackle for a loss, a sack. They've put this offense off tempo, if you will, and so UCF has struggled on third down. But Pitt's winning on the early downs. That punt checks up and goes bouncing to the 27 yard line. Hey, week three, Sunday NFL countdown, 10 a.m. on ESPN. Randy Moss has the best catches from college football. You got Moss. Pat Mahomes breaks down the art of the no look pass. So Patrick Mahomes will tell us how he does even better sometimes, not even looking at his receivers, which is scary. Monday Night Football then, Bears at FedEx Field to take on Washington. Bears just snuck out of Denver and trying to pick up another win against the Redskins 8 Eastern on ESPN ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Chicagoans are not terribly thrilled right now with Mitchell Trubisky. We'll see if he can find his way against Washington. He'll go broken eye and A.J. Davis is the tailback. Pickett loads up the throw down the sideline and he missed. Griffin Stewart the target after a big fourth down hit for him last week. We haven't seen an awful lot of French involved in the offense yet. He's been a bit of a decoy. They've gotten to him once. He's excellent on the jet sweep and he's great with the ball in his hands. So I would expect them to try on this down or the next down to get him started get him involved in the play a little bit more. It was mostly Mac on that first drive yep. and then French with the one touch so far. Into the belly of A.J. Davis, and it'll be third down coming up as he creeps across the 30. Two things you have to defend here if you're UCF. Mac and French, obviously the go-to targets. That duo is number two in the country in catches per game. And the scrambling ability of this quarterback when the pocket breaks down. Yeah, Q, it's been French over the middle. He's been open a few times. Pickett steps up. And he's got a sideline run for a first down to Griffin Stewart, who wrestles his way out of bounds. He was hand fighting and shoulder fighting with Collier, and he won the battle first down. Well, how about the patience with Pickett? He's rolling to his right, and he has to come all the way back to find Griffin Stewart. And he does, and with a strong throw on the move. That baseball upbringing we're talking about as a shortstop on the move making that throw. And you got a nice fight there at the end by Griffin Stewart. 
When Pickett said he loves throwing on the move, we both had the same thought. Like, oh, he had to have played shortstop. And yep. that was absolutely true. It was his first position. Pickett had time to set up. Now he dumps it off for Davis. And A.J. Davis dragging Mitchell near the first down marker. Who wants it more right now? The answer is the guys in blue. Well, you, you see the pit players struggling, battling for the extra yard. You see Pickett hanging in there, staying alive as long as he can to get rid of the ball to Davis. So there's a lot of want to right now in this pit offense. Well, they've got the Hall of Famers here this weekend, and you know that name Tony, uh, Tony Dorsett rings around the pit hallways, certainly, as Davis, off a little hesitation, has a first down to the 40. He was shocked he was so wide open. He was. Hey, Davis got that ball, and he couldn't believe the hole that he had in front of him. He kind of stopped and went, oh, I, I thought I needed to make a cut, but I, I guess I'll just keep going. Watch this. He's shaking his head now. Look at this. He gets there. He's like, wait a minute. He had no idea. Too much green grass. That's Butler Jenkins in motion. Pickett climbs the pocket and fires off the hands to set up a second down. Let's go back to the play with Davis. I want you to see the look on his face here. He comes up, whoa, am I that open? <laughs> it's the accidental hesitation. Yeah. He was expecting contact, expecting someone to flash in there. No one showed up. Confidence has been in short supply for this pit offense this year, but this is the best they've looked all season. The coaching staff said, is there any way we can get confidence from a loss to Penn State last week? After a solid week of practice, they kind of said yes. Yeah, it was interesting talking to the pit coaches about that because sometimes that tends to happen. Mark Whipple was telling us that sometimes, and Narduzzi said too, sometimes when you lose, for whatever reason, you gain confidence from that. Well, the, the other thing was they felt like as long as they didn't get taken out of their game plan in the first quarter, they had a shot. Because UCF can stun you and jump up on you 14 21 nothing and it changes the way you play the game and because UCF hasn't done that they've gained more confidence UCF's a top 25 third down defense but not today Pickett with confidence incomplete hey yeah, Adam they brought the blitz and they picked up the blitz well, you see the frustration on the face of Kenny Pickett as Carter dropped it. Kenny Pickett's a competitive guy. He competes against everybody in everything, and you just saw it wash over his face, the disappointment on the drop there. Yeah, oh, they're going to go. Wow. Well, you know, they're in no man's land. They're not feeling good about punting right here. Uh, their field goal kicker has the range to make this kick, but he perhaps has lost the confidence of head coach Pat Narduzzi. Pat Narduzzi calls a timeout, which was certainly interesting as well, because Media he said his out. regret from last week was the way he called timeouts. He uses one here, fourth down when we come back. So, looks like they're going for it. Yeah, I think he's being aggressive. He feels he needs points. Listen, if you don't believe that your kicker can get this, you might be better off punting and pinning them down if you believe your punter can do that and let your defense continue to put pressure on them because UCF has done nothing with the ball and starting inside their 10 would be a major major problem for them. Mack is down at the bottom of the screen and that's the way the ball goes. Taysier Mack toward the sideline. The ball came out but it looks like he had possession for a first down. Yeah you know he he caught that ball without leaving the ground so he doesn't have to complete a process. It simply does he have possession. He's got possession. He's out of bounds. That's a catch. Agreed. Because he was upright. That's yep. the standard. And so it is a pit first down. They turn to Mac. They're going to want to take a second look at that because the defender got his hand in. And now Nick Patty's in at quarterback. You've got Pickett down at the bottom of the formation, and they are going to. Well, take Josh Heupel, I believe, called timeout on the far side, signaling to the line judge because he's looking up at the big screen. And you see the defender put his hand in it and maybe initiate that that ball coming loose. Question is when in the process of the catch. 
Well, he already has possession before the defender gets his hand in there. And he he's permanently caught it. turned. Yeah, he caught it. He's taken two steps. One, two. Now he's going out of bounds. And now the defender gets his hand in. That, that's nothing. He's already established control and possession. UCF is challenging the play of a catch at the sideline. I, I don't know who told Hypo to do that, but that, that's a wasted timeout. Don't yeah, you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, if it's a simultaneous catch and he loses the ball right away or without any any movement, but he takes two steps afterwards. This is no different than a runner going out of bounds and the defender coming in knocking the ball out at that point. Now, to be clear, if he was going to the ground, that would be a different story. Correct. We'll take one more look and see if you have any other opinion. I'm not. I don't think. No, so. Here's your catch. Body language. Ball is put it. away. Two hands over it, and he's going out of bounds. Now it's being ripped out. I mean, there is no indisputable video evidence to turn that over. That's one where the head coach calls After timeout. After the review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch at the sideline. UCF is with their first timeout. If I'm Josh Heupel, I want to know who in the booth told me to do that. And if he looked up himself, I think he says to his staff, hey, guys, next time I want to call a timeout for a review, check me on it. Be honest with me. Stop me. Yeah. That's a systematic breakdown yeah. is really what it comes yeah, down to. You shouldn't to. waste a timeout like that. That was an obvious one. So Pickett remains in the game at the bottom of the screen as a wide receiver. And Nick Patty, the redshirt freshman from New Jersey, checks in to play quarterback. Yeah, they got French up top. In the slot. And now we got another whistle. I think the clock moves. Please reset the game clock to 24 seconds. Thank you. Yeah, we'd like our four and seconds back. Thank you second. very much. Thank you. Correction, it will start on the snap. Pat Narduzzi, when that challenge went awry, signaled first down pretty vehemently. He is amped right now. Yeah, this, this is the matchup with French when they can get to it. Oh, it's Patty instead who pulled it back and Nick Patty rummaging down to the 16. Correct assumption by UCF that Patty was in there for a reason. Some sort of a gimmick play. Good start to his season. Good start for Pitt against unbeaten UCF. Josh Heupel trying to fire up the troops. 7-0 Pitt College Football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. 37-10, but Pitt has run 21 of its 28 plays in Josh Heupel's territory. But if you are a UCF fan, the good news is with all that, they're only down seven. Maybe not for long. French, jet sweep. Maurice French seeking the end zone, and he's out of bounds at the two. Yeah, he's the guy we talked about that would get more touches. This is the jet sweep. This is not a surprise to UCF. They knew he would be running this. But again, when you get a good block on the edge, as they did that time by their tight end, Greg, that jet sweep will work. He started here as a defensive player. Now on offense, and Pitt's very happy about that. French again turns the corner for six. So we asked him, Maurice French, who's the big play man for Pitt. He's got two F's in his last name. It's F-F-R-E-N-C-H. And we asked him what the second F stands for, and he debated for a moment. He said, fast or flash or fantastic. <laughs> and then he told you the truth. The truth is, eh, his parents gave it to him. It's a kind of a Jamaican thing. Look at the resourcefulness of Pickett. And then the nice move by French. Where did this pit offense come from? Where has this been for three weeks? There were a couple signs in the Penn State game of some successful drives, but they never finished it. French is such a big target for this team, and now he's on track. 
spell check has been a daily occurrence in his life having to fix his Microsoft Word added to the dictionary French with two F's you can do that you can add that can you imagine entering class uh, Maurice for, for French <laughs> well, every day having to explain that why there are two F's Hugh, didn't he tell you that he basically had to convince a teacher by getting another teacher involved that that was the correct spelling of his name he's got a great sense of humor about it the substitute yeah the substitute teacher thought that uh, he was messing with yeah. the teacher because that's what you do to substitutes <laughs> and by the way it is extra yard for teachers week an annual celebration led by the college football playoff foundation that honors great teachers across the country to learn more about extra yard for teachers follow at cfp extra yard or search the hashtag extra yard week and here's maurice french on one of his teachers i just want to give a huge shout out to my high school guidance counselor at the brother high school uh, Ms. Hart, first name Nicole, uh, she did a lot for me, literally like just taking care of me and just making sure I was doing good in class and make sure I was in the right classes and just making sure I stayed away from people that wasn't helping me do anything. And uh, she just was a great person every day, just keeping me positive and just getting me to where I am. Hey, when we started talking to Maurice French about Nicole Hart, he just lit up. He, he... Everybody's got somebody like that in their life, but it was very clear that Nicole Hart was a major factor for Maurice French getting here today playing FBS football. And now another third down for this tempo-driven UCF offense. Yeah, you know, when you take care of business on first and second down, there is a player down. That's uh, Alexander. But when you control UCF on first or second down, you handle the Not tempo. On the field. And you might get the ball back soon. Alexander is down. We'll check on him when we come back. With the scoop and takes off for the 72-yard score. Huskies up 21-3 this game on ABC or ESPN2, depending on your location. Jason? Cassidy, thank you. That looked like it might be a trap game, but no dice so far as McCray leans for a first down for UCF on a big play off a third down. Yeah, they've, they've had trouble running their counter today. That time was the first time it's been run effectively for them. It's part of their bread and butter offensively as McCray gets bottled up. Yeah, and the interesting thing about their counter, they are so athletic with their offensive line. They're not afraid to use any one of those guys to pull on the counter. And that causes problems for the defense for how to, how to defend it. Gabriel sideline and incomplete that ball was wounded as Davis went up for it but Damari Mathis batted it away well yeah well defended Rod double move that you saw Davis do last week against Stanford Pitt would have none of it well they want to get Davis involved he's got one catch and that came on this drive and he is getting man coverage this Pitt team believes in playing press man coverage and the question down at the bottom here is really can he get off of the press coverage and does Gabriel have time to get it to him. Mathis right up in his face. Gabriel looks down there. Pressure came around the corner and he came back for it. Davis has a grab for UCF right at the stick. Yeah he he, he really ran a good route. He went beyond the marker and then came back to the ball and still was beyond the first down marker. That's a really well run route. This one launched down the sideline and incomplete. Flag comes in though. Damar Hamlin got tangled up and it looks like he's going to get called for pass interference. Although Narduzzi says there's no way he's going to catch that ball. Yeah, he's got a point here worth discussing is whether that's a catchable ball. Now, if he held Harris and there slowed him down. The play both are against the defense. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Defense number 91. That penalty is declined. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15 yard penalty automatic. First down. First down. Oh, doesn't matter which penalty they accepted. They get the 15 yards. Yeah, that's a reach and a grab. The extended arm is going to get you flagged. And it's hard to argue not catchable when you grab the guy and slow him down. He might have run another two or three, four yards faster. Yeah, that was fairly arm's length anyway. Yeah. As it came in. So 
The most sustained drive offensively for UCF so far. Gabriel gives it and McRae is swallowed up. He lost a yard. That's the biggest surprise from field level is the way this pit defensive front missing two of their better players out for the year with injuries have handled UCF's uh, very experienced offensive line. That was Jalen Twyman on the tackle who Quint spent some time with yesterday learning the ins and outs of the defensive line trade. Are you OK after that cue? He was much larger than you. Uh, what, what a super young man. You'll see him play nose. You'll see him play defensive tackle. Very analytical. Where's the 97 that Aaron Donald wore here at Pitt? He's got a bright future. Pitt calls their second. And his team Dorsa calls a timeout. 14 nothing Time Pitt out. with the lead. That U U UCF offensive line. And then offensively, you know, Pitt's really found something. So that's been kind of the story. But inside, they have not handled those two big guys. UCF has not lost in the regular season since 2016. And Gabriel, the handoff on third down, and that was a setup play, it looks like, for going for it on fourth down, don't you think? I think so. This is the area where they had two downs, and they're going to go fast for it. Hescock, the tight end, is the last one set. It is fourth down, and it's Anderson to the outside. Otis Anderson inside the red zone for UCF for the first time today. What terrific instincts by Anderson. He felt the outside and had the speed to get out there. Now this is a chance for UCF to get right back in this. They want to snap the ball between 10 and 12 seconds. Gabriel does it quickly there, and the closing speed for Pinnock was strong on the back of Davis. Right now, Davis has not been winning many of those outside one-on-one -on -one battles. And he's, he's being challenged. Pitt is really saying, hey, our corner is here. Pinnock, go get him. He's yours. No help. Go get him. Pressed down at the line once again at the bottom of the screen. That's Pinnock on Davis. Now he's got a safety leaning this way, but that safety is thinking run first. So any play action is going to bring him in, and Davis is going to be in single coverage. Coming this way, intercepted. Pinnock stayed on the side that the ball went, and he ripped it off. We talked about confusing the freshman. They confused him this time. They showed him man coverage initially, and then Pinnock backed out, bailed out of it into a zone, and had his eyes on the quarterback the entire time. You see him backing out, you see the safety backing out. And that ball, even if it had been thrown perfectly, Pinnock would have been there to pick. How about the celebration on that sideline? Man. So the story really has been the pit defense and the way they've gotten after Gabriel, the quarterback. They've knocked him around. They've picked off two of his passes. Pick it. Hit as he throws and nearly intercepted. Brendan Hayes came with the contact on Pickett, who tastes turf for really one of the first times today, and he may be dinged up. Working out that right arm. He got stung pretty good. Shaking out his right hand now after his walkover, getting the play from offensive coordinator Mark Whipple. He's going to stay in the ball game. Yeah, Brendan Hayes, Quint, was in on him and got to him as he was trying to get rid of that ball. Second team all conference defensive end for UCF Hayes. This is a screen. That doesn't go anywhere. Vincent Davis gets locked up, and it's third down and long for Pitt. If there's one thing you're thinking, UCF, you're trying to figure out where is number 11 Mack, and how do we double him? Because he's been a thorn in the side of the UCF defense so far in this ball game. This he is, is the one game you, you can't let hurt you. Kenny Pickett on third and 11. Clark was the closest one to Bell Clark. 
Pitt wants a flag and it's not coming. That is a good three and out for the UCF defense after after that pick. So we see the pit punter Chris Dulu Otis Anderson back to receive. Anderson back to receive. Chris Dulu drives him back as it goes rolling along the sideline. UCF about three yards of play right now, Rod. Yeah, if you're wondering what's up with their offense, it's been all about the pit defense. You know, D Dylan Gabriel's had trouble. He's been harassed. He's been knocked around. And he's been confused a little bit on the back end by what Pitt has been doing in the secondary. A lot of man coverage, but then they've showed him man coverage and then fallen back into a zone. It's led to two picks. He's been sacked, and they've had a couple of TFLs. So the Pitt defense has been stellar so far. First down for Killens and UCF, and he's slung out of bounds. The question is, will we see, if this continues, will we see more of Brandon Wimbush, who got one play in the first quarter? He is more of the running quarterback. Timeout. As Johnson's Ryan. down and injured yeah. Kylan Johnson, the linebacker. Well, we do expect to see Mac as well. We were told yesterday that Mac would take some snaps, that they had a plan for him to be in the ball game, and it wasn't contingent on how Gabriel played. Right now, we have to wonder how the freshman quarterback is feeling. Nothing has gone right for him in this ball game yet. How many clean pockets has he had? Just counting off uh, the top of your head. Uh, I, I can't think of more than three. Yeah, two or three. Two or three at most. So all the credit really goes to that Pitt defensive line. Twyman up front, Patrick Jones up front, and hopefully Johnson isn't hurt too badly and will be right back. At 7.30 p.m. Eastern, all season long. Thank goodness they're back. It's uh, uh, the world time. is just better with TJ. Da -da 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 -da. Time. Just play the music underneath every play and we're fine. It's been a great game, but the music makes it better. Killens is drilled. Another TFL. This time it's done by Morgan. And now they're going to go fast anyway, even after a loss. Third down and 14. UCF does not look like the Lamborghini they looked like last week against Stanford. Now the matchup that they like is in the slot. Oh, a run on oh, third and 14 wow. rod. That is so uncharacteristic of them. This is usually a high-flying, take-your-shots kind of offense. Josh Heupel told us he wanted 15 pass plays of 20-plus. He wants that many shots, but they decide not to take it on a third down and long. And they'll instead say discretion, the better part of Valor, and send out Osteen, who replaces Mac Loudermilk, the punter from last year. Inside the 20 and picked up by Pitt for the touchdown. They got a special team score from Davis. Morgan got in there to bat it. And Pitt is riled up. I'll tell you, Matthews was in there so fast, he could have blocked that with his entire body. There's a kick six, a little scoop and score after the block. Davis brings it in. Extra point good for the Panthers. Wow. A shocker here at Heinz Field with a lot of time left, but... 
This is one sided as you can get. Here you see on the left side, you saw Morgan coming in. He's six foot four, long, and he got in untouched. That had to be a blown assignment inside, and once he got in there, he actually kind of slowed up to get that with his hand so that Davis could get the score. Now, we talked about UCF and the undefeated season. This is what the critics talk about when you have to play a schedule with back-to-back -back physical opponents in a conference. Now, some hangover from last week. Some physicality from last week to this week against another tough team. I don't know. You tell me. I'll what? tell you. Yeah, right. I'll tell you. It's not the same team emotionally. In the bounce house. Yeah, they may have brought their warm weather here to Pittsburgh, but emotionally they're flat. Last time they trailed by this much in the second quarter, Larod Stevens Howling was running the ball for Pitt, and they played their first meeting in this series. And, and Q, just to follow up with that, that is the kind of discussion that happens in the committee room with those coaches. Those coaches will tell the others, look, week to week, emotionally and physically, it is a different deal when you are playing a tough or a physical opponent week after week as opposed to getting up for one or two for the season. Now, that doesn't mean that UCF can't come back in this ballgame. This is the reality of what people talk about when they evaluate your schedule. This is one of the criticisms that you don't have to do this week after week as they are doing this second week now after having Stanford last week. And that's the point. The story could change here in the yep. second half. But for now, that's what people are feeling who are critics of UCF. McRae gets drilled. Phil Campbell, who had the pick earlier, and second down coming up. And, and UCF doesn't have a spark. I mean, Q talked about them being dead there. They need a spark. Someone has to pick them up. They have three receivers at the bottom. Campbell was late over. And another run. McCray has a first down for UCF. Now, yes, they're down 21, but yes, the pedigree is there as well. They're 28 and 1 in their last 29 games. They've won 25 straight regular season games, sometimes in comeback fashion, but this is a deficit they have not seen under Heifel or Scott Frost. And we'll see how they react with a freshman quarterback. Yeah, and they keep running this counter. That's a bread and butter play for them. And they've had only partial success with it. It's critical to their passing game. They run play action off of it. There's play action. Gabriel a little too high. It's incomplete. Paris Ford on the coverage and third down is on the way. Yeah, and this gives Pitt time to bring in their third down defense. Now. They will dial up the pressure inside. They've got six defensive backs out there. Danielson was last off the field, and the new D-line gets there. Baldonado, the Italian native, with the sack. Coach Heupel's all over the official on the far side, claiming that Pitt had more than 11 players on the field. Well, they may have, but you got to give the refs time to count them. And if you're going fast trying to get them, See it's a Daniels, bit of an issue. Danielson right at midfield. He did get off. Yeah. Seventh tackle for loss for Pitt today. What a bounce for Osteen. Inside the 10, and it finally tumbles down to the 5. But that will not quiet the Pitt student section. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans just like these by awarding the Live My Student Section of the Year. And they're doing push-ups. The Pittsburgh Panthers student section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. They are. They're very good at karaoke together, too. How's your karaoke? <laughs> it depends on the song. Oh, you, you mean you have a song? I have a couple. You gonna share? Yeah, Your Love by the Outfield. Great okay. song. All right. Tremendous walk-up song, too. First down for Davis, and he picks his way through across the 10-yard line. Do you have one? Uh, no, I stay away from karaoke. I'm strongly encouraged by my family not to sing. <laughs> uh, 
What support you have at home? Very nice. <laughs> Now Q, Q's got a voice. He should get in there and do Sweet Caroline with them is really what should happen later on in this game. A.J. Davis keeps his feet. The Under Armour All-American just a couple of years ago has a first down. You know, this is good old-fashioned football. This is winning it up front. This is the pit offensive line stoning beating the UCF defensive line and then vice versa. You know when you turn it around when UCF has the ball they've been dominated by that pit defensive line. Could put Curtis Martin in that jersey and it'd be the same thing from a couple decades ago. And a whistle before the handoff to Davis and a flag comes in. Full start. Full start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. First down. So don't forget, 7.30 Eastern on ABC, Oklahoma State and Texas. Four-game win streak for OSU in the series. But uh, Jeezy and the Pickers on game day were like all Texas. Well, uh, how is it possible that Texas would lose four in a row to OK State? And it, five in just, a row in Austin. You, you'd feel that this would change, right? I, I'm with you on that. I, I, think, I think that will change. Davis on a switchback. A.J. Davis lost the ball. It's still loose. Battle continues, and it's in the arms of Tay Gowan for UCF. A massive turnover. That could be the spark. That could be the thing to get UCF going. It's a fumble covered by the defense. See, when this comes out for David, he just lost that. Looks like that was that was Mitchell who who tackled him. He was he was engaged and then he disengaged got the yeah. arm in. That's a clear fumble and a good recovery for UCF. The spark gives them a short field just outside the red zone. And you really have to be thinking Davis. They really haven't gotten him too involved and you know they had the one pick when they got caught in the zone. But he's really the guy that would would light their offense. He's going to be a blocker here as this goes wide for Marlon Williams. And Davis is his convoy up the sideline to the 21. They put those two receivers in a mini bunch. Yeah, two big guys. You got one at Mark Williams at 220 pounds and then the tall, tall Davis. Williams in motion. Gabriel down the middle and there's a flag. Should be. Yeah, he was held. Jazzy Stalker into Davis. Yeah, he grabbed him as Davis ran by him. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number seven. Ten yard penalty, automatic. First down. And he, he wasn't trying to hide it. He was beaten, and he just reached out and grabbed as much jersey as he could get. Look at that. Well, when you listen to jazzy music, sometimes it's syncopated. <laughs> and so he was just messing around with the rhythm there. Uh, he was off the. It's first down at 10, just outside of the 10. And Gabriel hands it off to Killen. Second down coming up. Can UCF get in? Especially important considering Pitt gets the ball after halftime. Yeah, that's right. One of the adjustments for UCF is to find a rushing attack at halftime. 72 rush yards total. Killens around the corner. He has speed and he scores. He won back to back 200 meter state titles in high school and you saw why right there. Yeah there was a soft edge. He had an escort coming to the edge with a good block out in front and Harris and once he got to that corner no problem. One of the few times we've seen the Pitt defense falter. There was no one to set the edge for Pitt. Dylan Barnes for the extra point. The college football world has learned do not count out UCF until you really have to. And the Knights are on the comeback trail here in Pittsburgh. 21 to 7 your score under five to go in the first half.
of a soft edge. A really nice play. Look at here when you think about it. You got your guys inside. 28 Johnson is the only possible guy to get to the edge. But he goes inside trying to get to the running back. Well, now you got Hescock out there for a block. You're not fast enough to cut that angle. There is no edge. Now a nice easy run to get through there by Killens who just killed them getting to the edge. Yeah. It in this moment, the fumble looks huge for Pitt. Davis coughs it up inside the 35-yard line. Pitt gets the ball after halftime, so a pivotal five minutes here to see what UCF's ground they're standing on is, and a kickoff out of bounds is not exactly what the Knights wanted from Orlando. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. All state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, All state. And the good news for UCF is that they found something on the ground, you know, running the ball with Killens, which can help them open up the passing game, maybe take some pressure off of Gabriel, give him a little bit more time to throw because in the first half, He's not been comfortable at quarterback. He's been harassed and knocked around. Yeah, it doesn't give the receivers much of an opportunity to get off the line and, and to do what they need to do for those big plays that UCF is seeking. Kenny Pickett to throw with a bullet to the 45. That's Will Gregg, the Arkansas transfer. Malik Carter smells the first down and he has it. So Carter, who came to Pitt as a defensive back and has turned to running back, getting some run here in game number four. Interesting to see how Pitt handles this series in this last four minutes. Do they really try and be deliberate? Or if they have an opportunity, do they take a shot? Pickett escorted out of bounds. You know, we were talking to Randy Shannon, the UCF defensive coordinator, about Mark Whipple, who he worked with back in the day at Miami, and we asked about tendencies or things that he might know about Whipple, and he said, it, it changes every series, changes every week. I don't, I don't know what I'm getting out of him. That's right. When you work with someone so long, they know you. You know them, so they know what you know. So but you think you know, you think what, you know, they know. what they know. Yeah. If you see Mark Whipple around town, ask him about his USFL stories. He has some <laughs> tremendous ones from back in the 80s. Oh, a big lick on the outside by Clark, the cornerback, stepping up on Carter. Yeah, Taylor made for him. He was in the right spot, rode up the corner, saw that, and was ready for it. Now, big third down for Pitt. To talk about a nice form tackle. Head up, uses his shoulder. Good clean tackle. Yeah, in the era of targeting, which we have rightfully so to help make the game safer. That was a very strong tackle. Number 11 over there. Mack. On the outside for Pickett, whose eyes gravitate that way. Now he's going to run. He has a field in front of him and a first down to the 39 for Pickett again at 13. It is the third or fourth time he's done that today. And you need your quarterback to be able to make a key play to get your first down a few times in the ball game. That was one of them. We've talked about Kenny Pickett and his competitiveness. Uh, we asked him, how competitive are you? He said, well, I'm competitive in just about everything, including mini golf, to the point where I won't even let my girlfriend win in mini golf. You may not keep his girlfriend very long. Yeah, just every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. If there's that, if there's a competition gap, which <laughs> he seemed to suggest there, why well, he was even competitive in talking about it with us. Yeah. <laughs> so, second down and 13 for Pickett. On the move again, and he's got a third down coming up. Yeah. 
Kenny Pickett, whose parents were both athletes. His mom was a soccer player. His dad was a football linebacker, and he's going to go walk and talk to Whipple. You like the walkover? Uh, I don't mind it for the reasons they stated. Although the scary thing is Pickett said he was a little gassed late in the game oh, yeah. last week. Yeah, it's warm out there. He just ran the ball. Then he ran to the sideline and ran back to the huddle. How do they play 11 Mac on the short side of the field. He's one on one down the field and that's French intended and incomplete. So fourth down and nine with a buck 12 to go in plus territory and it looks like they're going to punt. You must be sound. In the kicking game, UCF had a punt block. Pit. Are they sound here? Can they put this inside the tin? Chris Dulu does get it inside the tin for Anderson. Hey, yesterday, a couple of employees from Bristol Myers Squibb came on through. September 4th, they started a three week journey to cycle across America, coast to coast for Cancer Ride, through Pittsburgh on the way to Long Branch, New Jersey. Dana Vaughn's, Eric Mortensen, both cancer survivors. What an opportunity for them to raise awareness and raise some money and got a chance to talk to you here at had, Pittsburgh. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to them about the fact that uh, how their recoveries are going and Dana, in fact, he already did a leg. He did 200 miles in two days with an elevation of up to 14,000 uh, 14, feet. That's some serious cycling. I know that conversation was special for you and close to your heart. Oh, absolutely. We shared nice stories about dealing with treatment. Gabriel got it. Jacob Harris, great adjustment. All six foot five of him. You see that well, yeah, well equipped for the speed here. Gabriel unloads to the sideline. He has Nixon out of bounds at the 46 with 46 seconds to go. We told you there would be man coverage, and they got a matchup they want. They go after the slot corner there. And Dane Jackson. They'll run it here with a couple of timeouts remaining. UCF has two left. Well, remember that Harris is six foot five. And so he's got a, an advantage over just about every matchup. It's incomplete. Jackson the coverage on Nixon. So second down and ten coming up. Looked like the clock might have been a little late to start yeah. on the last play. You know, they have a chance here. They've got plenty of time to, to get in position for a score. Big play offense, third in yards per game in the country entering play today. Critical is protection here. Protection for Gabriel. Got the tight end, Hescock, in there. Pocket was clean for a moment. Now Gabriel scrambling for his life, and he throws it out of bounds. Smart play. Flag is in. Flag has come out. And let's see if it's a personal foul. Alexander was in on Gabriel. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, low hit on the passer. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. Smart play by Gabriel. Not so smart by Alexander. That's frustration at the end for chasing that little guy and not getting to him. Narduzzi's like, why? Why do that? That's a three-point penalty minimum. Oh, he actually didn't get much of him, Q. I'm not sure he actually got his hands on him. He dove at him low, and it looked worse than it might have been. Gabriel outside for Davis. Did he get a foot in? No. Incomplete. It was out of bounds. Great throw. But not enough room. Does he get a foot in? Catch. Out of bounds. He's on the white there. He's I see why they call that. That was close on the sideline. Yeah, I think I think they're gonna previous play of an incomplete pass. 
is under further review. I was with you. Yeah. And then you look, and there might have been a grain of green in between his foot and the sideline. Yeah, it's, it's worth the look. Left foot. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah, that's, you know, you've got the official right there, and he's seeing toe on white. I, I, I don't see the space of green that you see. No, I don't see it on that angle either, and I think that was the better angle. Yeah, you need indisputable video evidence, and I don't think you can say that that's indisputable. I'm with you. Uh, that's going to be stands at least. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. But, but a good decision yeah. to stop it. Yeah, this is stop definitely it. worth it. That yeah. was closer than I thought. That was one of those plays where, as you're watching it, you think one thing, you get a second look, and you're you're kind of oscillating back and forth. So they're going to talk it over with the replay booth, and here's the call. After further review, the rolling on the field stands. It is an incomplete pass. Yeah, close enough to these stands instead of confirmed, so UCF's got to go back to the drawing board. Now, the personal foul on Alexander cost hit 15 yards. Is this a personal foul? He didn't touch him. No. He didn't touch him. Some pretty good acting over there by Gabriel. throw to the sideline he wanted Nixon a little more conservative approach defensively that time for Pitt they played two safeties back and played aggressive man coverage underneath I would expect something similar here they're afraid of the height mismatches on the outside We're going to have a whistle and a timeout Pitt, from Pitt. Pitt takes their third and final charge time out of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. So Pat Narduzzi, the defensive specialist, came here from Michigan State. Now in his fifth season at Pitt after winning the division last year. I, I think people have forgotten just how good Narduzzi is on the defensive end. I mean, he was the mastermind behind all those great Michigan State defenses the way they shut people down. And when it comes to defensive back play and how to mix coverages, you, you may not find anybody better. And he's shown some of that today with some man coverage and having his guys pre-snap show man, drop into zone. He's had a safety buzz to the center of the field cue. He's mixed it up. Well, he's known to bring pressure. Is this a situation that says get after the strong quarterback or drop and play coverage? I think if he doesn't bring pressure, he'll twist them up front, but he's going to keep two safeties back. That'd be my guess here. They go to three down linemen on third down as they typically do. He'll bring a fourth rusher, and UCF will have to figure out where he comes from. Who is it? They bring a fifth and a DB as well to the sideline and nearly grabbed by Davis, but he couldn't reel it in. And Pinnock went down. Pinnock went down grabbing his left leg. Now, Pinnock was not playing man coverage. He turned right away and ran back to a deep third. And that was thrown up as a jump ball. And because Davis is so tall, 6'3", Davis had a shot at it. This, is, this has got help from the inside. He's playing a three deep position. And look at that. He pulled something as he went up. A little bit of a push there by Davis, but as long as the receiver doesn't fully extend the hand, he's not going to be called for offensive pass interference. Pinnock is down, the junior defensive back whose father played four years at Indiana. Pinnock got picked on quite a bit in that Penn State game, yeah. and he handled it pretty well. Yeah, Penn State went after him. But he hung in there, and, you know, there, there will be days like that as a defensive back. You'll be the guy picked on. But you grow from it, and you get better, and hopefully Pinnock will get healthier.
So it's fourth down for UCF which trailed 21 nothing then capitalized on a fumble from A.J. Davis with the Killens touchdown just a couple of minutes ago. This will be Dylan Barnes, the 22 year old kicker the transfer from Mars Hill officially from 43. Barnes splits him. And remember that is the result of a fake personal foul call that gave them 15 yards that the officials missed. So UCF is hanging around thanks in part to that call and thanks to the fumble recovery as well for Josh Heupel in his second season. ACC Network is your home for more ACC sports. Visit getaccn.com to check for providers in your area. And if you don't see yours listed, contact them to demand they carry ACC Network. I know Jordan Cornett's very excited about ACC Network, one of my basketball partners from last year. He's pumped about what they're doing there, so get on that. Yeah. Tell him he has to wait to basketball season. Right now, you can get all the good ACC football you want. That is true. Four seconds to go. Pitt will get the ball after halftime. And remember, Pitt had the ball up three scores until that fumble. So French back to receive with four seconds to go in this half. And this bouncer, with the clock not starting, that should end the half. Now the clock operator gets on the task and sends it down to one second that you would imagine that would be the end of the first half clock is down at one second but if UCF saw that there's going to be at least a firm discussion. There we go. Good job by our crew. We've seen this very sleek offense, and there's the guy, A.J. Davis, who had a strong first half for Pitt until he put the ball on the deck, leading to that Killens touchdown. And so Pitt will have the ball as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And yes, the Pitt offense has a couple of scores. Q Whale. Uh, the Pitt offense has a couple of scores. 245 yards, but the defense has been the score. Yeah, French got that touchdown, but it's been about that defensive front. It's been up front harassing Gabriel, Jalen Twyman and company, and then, you know, kind of suckering Gabriel into throwing into a zone. Pinnock got a pick in the end zone when UCF was threatening the score, and the pace of this game is being played at Pittsburgh's pace. A.J. Davis, a short gain as we go downstairs to Quint. Our offensive line is the key to winning this ball game. The words of Josh Heupel, UCF head coach. It's his own line that they played well this season until the first half today. Their pull schemes have been ineffective. They have also missed assignments. They have to play better in the second half. The other group that must do better is the D line in terms of stopping picket when he scrambles he's got to put up a picket fence he's got seven rushes for 35 yards and he's moved the chains they're gonna go wildcat so no need for the fence as Davis goes crashing through it well that's a tape review Stanford ran wildcat last week against him and did it very effectively and did you see what Q did with the picket fence thing oh it was beautiful yeah I loved it it was almost as beautiful uh, as his sunglasses as pocket square I, ah. I'd like to take credit for that but our, our graphics uh, gentleman Ben Powers told me go with picket fence you have joke writers now I didn't know we had that in the budget Davis out of the wildcat on first down they're going to do it again and he is just a couple of yards short of the first down marker. You know they saved this until the second half again that's film study that's looking at that Stanford tape and going you know when Stanford went Wildcat they had a lot of success too bad they weren't in the ball game long enough to keep doing it. Here's a third straight dose of it from Pitt. And this one they're on Brendan Hayes goes high and it's third down. Why do you think it works so well against 
uh, UCF last week with Stanford. Well, Stanford went in and game planned for it, and they had the extra tight end. You, you got you have an extra blocker when you do Wildcat. You don't have a ball carrier who steps away. So they had a one-man advantage, and it took UCF a little bit to adjust to it, and they were way ahead, so Stanford didn't stick with it. Pick it back in. Davis to his left. Can he pick it? Too high. Davis had a lot of room in front of him. Would have been a first down. Instead, it's punt time. Yeah, he had him out there. You know, a decent throw. He catches that and easily picks up the first down. That's where some of the inconsistency shows up that's held Pickett back a little bit. But you have to take into consideration. Pickett is in his third year. He's had three offensive coordinators. He's been taught a lot of different things in a short period of time. Chris Dulu to punt and the pit defense should be back on the field with that strong defensive line. We talked about him in the first half Jalen Twyman. Quint Kesnick spent some time with the sophomore out of D.C. just yesterday. OK. So boom, I can't get the swim under. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the rip, and then rip. hold on to me. I'm gonna try to forklift it off, and and you and got me locked. You. you got me locked up. Yeah. I might do try to do a forklift or something like that. Or, you call that forklift? Uh huh. Yeah. I might try to sumo, yeah. like sumo wrestling. You and they get they inside me. Like, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So I'm getting like this and trying to get in your chest. Back I don't in. know, man. You look, you look Come on. strong for your. I weigh 100. Hey, old guy, what, what was the forklift like? What did you learn from him? I learned a ton in like 10 minutes. He taught me more pass rushing moves than I had learned in, in my whole high school career as a nose guard. He has a great pin and swim move. His math is, is, is down and in pain. Yeah, Q, he ran into Hessock up high and took, took the worst of that. So Damari Mathis, the junior out of Lakeland, Florida, is down. Yeah, he's 5'11 and 180 on pounds, field. taking on a 250-pounder. We'll check on Mathis when we come back. So during the break, Damari Mathis came off, and the play where he was injured was under review for a possible targeting foul as he hit Hescock. And the official word is no targeting. Yeah, it was looking at leading with the crown, but we have a couple of instances there to consider. Both players lead with the crown. Arguably, Mathis led with his left shoulder, and it was a tight end who ducked his head that initiated the contact. So a good no call. Dylan Gabriel, the freshman, wings it for Davis. Gabe Davis has it. He beat Pitt off. 20 yard line and for a kid they always said wasn't fast enough in high school that's a big hit at 65. Yeah single coverage he's had trouble getting free today. Pinnock remember was injured in the first half this was timeout for and player. he came back out maybe not fully recovered but watch the end of this just a little hand fighting mutual combat nothing wrong with that. But Pinnock, not completely healthy, could not stay with Davis. And you're right, Davis has a chip on his shoulder about people all throughout his life saying he's not fast enough. Well, how you like me now? He said he'd get the message through his high school coaches that people who came to take a look at him would say to the coaches, he's not fast enough. He runs a 4-6. That's not good enough. And in a big matchup last week, he was the clear winner against Adebo in Stanford. Yeah, yeah, he, he faced Adebo and won that battle and was focused on being consistent this week having another good game and expecting man coverage which he got and he's had some success against it. So we know where at. Pinnock got hurt. Yep. Yeah Pinnock's not 100 percent as you guys mentioned from that earlier injury but Davis the hunger is just palpable with him. He timed slow at a camp. Meanwhile, he's making plays left and right. Charlie Partridge, who's now on the pit staff, was the FAU head coach. Said he loved him at camp. You know, the, the time was slow, and, and I guess a lot of coaches put him on the shelf because of that. But this kid is a playmaker. Well, Q, that's how a guy winds up, you know, at UCF instead of a, a Power 5 team. And then he continues to develop and becomes just great. 
McCray sidestepped one and kept his feet in the arms of Jazzy Stocker, who went for a bit of a ride. And, and you notice, go back to that last play, finally Gabriel had protection in time to make that deep throw. And it was on target. McCray running hard now, and he is right near the marker. It looks like they're going to put him right at the 10 yard line and say first down. Let's talk about the halftime adjustments for UCF. They did not run the ball well inside in the first half. They're committed to it now and they protected Gabriel to get the ball down the field and focused on an uncovered Davis. A bust, a complete bust. Pitt was running somebody off the field on the snap and gave Davis scores. You got to get lined up. You, you can't let the best receiver on the field line up against air and they just did Pitt ran a corner off right in front of where I'm standing leaving that wide receiver wide open unbelievable it was Williams that was rushing off UCF with a lot of time remaining just going to go for the one and take it so 17 unanswered by UCF and the substitution fiasco Hurts Pitt big time. Yeah, you just can't have that. There's Pinnock coming on, and he's waving someone on. He runs off, and there's no one at all near Davis. As you see, there was Williams trying to run from the far side to him. You know, you got to at least call a timeout. You can't let that happen. And Pinnock is telling the freshman Williams, well, the freshman's not right, right? But that, the upperclassman is always right. But see that there, that the handshake, he said, hey, we're good, but we're yeah. not good, but we're good, but yeah. we're not good. Yeah. You got to move on, right? I mean, it's a clear, blatant mistake. You got to move on. And Pitt talked to us about how playing this UCF team last year helped their preparation and practice this week. How they able to able to get their scout team to snap the ball in seven to ten seconds. But you can rep it a million times. Until you face it in person. Well, you're, you're right, Q, and the, and the starters are good with it. It's the backups, the young guys who don't get the same reps. That's exactly what Narduzzi told us. He's most fearful of the guys who've never seen UCF before. Tempo does some things to your heart rate. As Kenny Pickett will bring the offense back out and we'll take a look at today's player spotlight. It's brought to you by Wrangler. Pickett not as accurate as we've seen the last couple of weeks. 15 for 25, but again, no mistakes. He's done as much with his legs as he has with his arms. He's picked up a couple of first downs, running on third down, scrambling, breaking the pocket to keep drives alive. And he may need more of that here in this third quarter. This offense has been stymied the last several minutes going back to the second quarter. Freshman Vincent Davis is in his tailback. Greg in front. They keep both in. Pickett goes for the shot to French. And he put it on his hands. It's incomplete. Navelle Clark was there. Yeah, good coverage by Clark and a perfectly well-thrown ball by Pickett. And French could not come up with it. Now he gets on him in a hurry. When you're even, you're leaving, right? And Clark at the last minute gets that right hand in there. That is a great, great defensive play. Tremendous effort to close by Clark. He's broken up two passes. He's made three tackles. He is the senior out of Miami. Pickett goes across the middle. He has Butler Jenkins. Oh, what a tackle. My goodness. What a tackle. Richie Grant, the safety who's just everywhere on tape, and it's a first down for Pitt nonetheless. Put that tackle on tape. That's for that's for teaching. Lead with the shoulder, wrap him up. That's perfect. Good form tackle. First team all conference DB, Richie Grant, who had a pick in this game last year. And that is called incomplete. Nate Evans, the Louisiana, with a field, big hit. An incomplete pass. He's going to get one of his backs killed like that. Yeah, that is a big lick from Evans. Love what Nate Evans told us about UCF and its rankings. He said, we want to win all our games, and if we do that, what can they take from us? Good point. 
That's the attitude of at least one man on the defense. French juggled it, kept his feet. French around the corner and a marker's in at the 34. I, I think there was a hold in there. I saw someone grab Robinson's jersey and it looked like it wasn't going to be. Personal foul, face mask. Uh. Offense, number 10. Yeah. 15 yard penalty, automatic repeat. Do you hear Sounds the great. emotional roller coaster the crowd yeah. went on? They heard face mask and they thought for sure it was on the defense. They roared and then it went on the offense and it was yeah. downtrodden. Even the quarterback, Pickett, clapped. Did he really? Yeah, he had his back to the official, so he starts clapping. Well, and then he realizes face mask on the offense? Q, you're starting Correction. to feel the momentum. Repeat, yes. Second down. Yes, it, it, this drive is, is critical for Pitt because the momentum has shifted. I like UCF's energy. In the second half, they're, they're the deeper team, I believe, used to this heat, and they're starting to play like themselves. Yeah, the tempo pace of the game is starting to pick up to where UCF is comfortable with it. Second down and 25. They need a couple of explosive plays, maybe. And this will be a run on first down for Davis, and he's only got a couple of yards. Vincent Davis, the freshman who's from Fort Lauderdale just three hours away from UCF's campus in Orlando. Now if you're Randy Shannon do you try to create something here on this third and long. Do you bring a little extra pressure to see if you can create a, a turnover and get a short field. So this is third down and French off the screen French cuts it up field and gets hog tied Richie Grant was in once again. After that form tackle earlier and Pitt, which went backward with the penalty against Gregg will have to punt. And remember the last time that UCF had the ball they found their inside rushing attack something that wasn't there in the first half the yards they got in the first half they were on the edge on the perimeter using Killen. And the scary part right now for Pitt is UCF has its footing again. Yep. Yep. There's no backpedaling right now for the Knights. Chris Dulu to punt. And it's away for Anderson who has to go all the way back inside the 10. Anderson to the outside showing the speed. Otis Anderson ducks through one. Keeps his feet again off a of pirouette. Sees the cavalry coming and switches back. Anderson touchdown. Oh my. A stunned Steel City off 87 yards of brilliance from Anderson. What a terrific run. And just like that, the unbeaten Knights are alive and thriving. You want to talk about a pun returner at his best? Man, he just did all that and brought UCF right back in this ball game. To the game brought to you by Samsung. It just happened. And you'll never see a better punt return set up by a good return guy. Otis Anderson gets to the edge. Eric Hallett, 31. Anderson set him up and took the edge away from him. So once he got outside, he was out the gate. And then the rest of it is just incredible. But it was that first move to get to the edge when Hallett 31 feigned inside a little bit because Anderson influenced him inside and then Anderson went back outside and Gabriel had every reason to be excited. I mean Quint mentioned it there was little life if any on that sideline in the first half and it's a totally different situation right now for UCF which has taken the lead after trailing 21 nothing with six plus minutes left in the half Pitt had the ball UCF's gone touchdown field goal touchdown and punt return score in the last 11 09. Well and they, they've done it with the the kick six return also touchdown off of a turnover with a short field. So those things have helped them to get back in this thing. It hasn't been the consistent UCF offense 
they've taken full advantage of mistakes by Pitt. And it's become piecemeal a wave yep. for UCF. Kenny Pickett giving ground. Pickett throws it away. I think they went into the locker room with hope after a, a nice five minutes, last five minutes of that second quarter. They came out of the locker room, guys, with smiles. I was standing down by that tunnel, like, looking at these guys. They're smiling and happy, uh, almost as if to say, you know, we're so used to being the front runner and being up 25 nothing early. This is different. This will be more revealing about our character as a team, a brotherhood that they say is, is like none other. The challenge they needed. Well, they have the full emotional scale. They're both upstart and favorite over the course of their season a lot, and sometimes in the same game as this one goes to the short side to Butler Jenkins, and he's down and hurt now for Pitt. So the injury bug continues for the Pitt Panthers. As the clock is rolling with Butler Jenkins down, they're going to have to reset the clock again. Official timeout for injured player. The clock operator catches up at 8:10. And so Butler Jenkins, the Floridian, Time is down. Third down when we come back, and we'll check on the pit wideout. Wonderful in the first half, or the first quarter. They started three for four. They're just one for their last six. Yeah, now the question becomes, who's the go-to guy here? They've got a trips formation, but they've been having trouble getting off the line of scrimmage against press coverage. Mack is in the slot. And this is incomplete, and a flag comes in. Aaron Robinson on the coverage against Carter. I'm not sure if he got there early or if he wound up with the punch and got a personal foul for it, but he was looking dead at it and came in hard with it. There is no foul for defensive pass interference. Oh, okay. It is fourth down. Watch, watch the right arm, though, as he comes in. He really throws that right arm. It was kind of a vicious hit with the right arm, which got my attention. I thought that might have been what they were going for. You know why it, the ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage? Because he threw the receiver across the line of scrimmage <laughs> to meet the ball shy of the line of scrimmage. That's a, that's a good point. Because that right arm, that hit, was a big, big, vicious hit and knocked him back. And he didn't have to either. He's well behind the line to gain. So the crowds are not exactly loving it here in Pittsburgh. And Chris Dulu with the punt. That bounces out of bounds. Tonight, Oklahoma State, number 12, Texas, the Big 12, 7.30 on ABC. And the last time Oak State was in Austin, it was 13 to 10 in overtime. You figure 23 points isn't going to be the total Probably not. tonight. Sam Ellinger is hoping for more than 10, certainly. The wonderful quarterback for the Texas Longhorns. He has really progressed as a passer. And if he continues to do what he's been doing, People will be talking about him all season long. If Texas wins, he'll be in that Heisman discussion because of the way he performs. Considering Batman has filmed here, uh, I asked Sam Ellinger why so serious uh -huh. in that picture. Killens on the run. He's got a couple of yards, and that's been a difference for UCF in the last quarter or so is the run game. The serenade continues for the flag from moments ago. Problem there. That matchup problem with a six or five inch guy in the slot. Harris had a big catch earlier. Instead, top side. Trey Nixon breaks a tackle and off he goes. Nixon out of bounds in the arms of Stocker in a first down. UCF, there's one of those big plays for 31. Yeah, missed tackle. I mean, all the things that Pitt did right in the first half, they're doing wrong in the second half. Leaving a receiver uncovered, you know, not covering a kick return, punt return, a missed tackle here. Gabriel for Hescock, the Wisconsin transfer, his former team with a big win earlier today against Michigan. It's not exactly a drizzle for UCF. It comes in large downpour spurts, and they keep the pressure on, which leads to second halves like this that you're seeing as John Morgan rips down the ball carrier Killings in third down. Well, the good news for UCF, they're back at their tempo. Look at this. Look how quickly they're up. 
They want to snap it within 10 seconds. Look over here it slows it down slightly but not much. Movement at the line. Flag is in. Free play. Davis down the sideline. Got it again. Kimmich. Now the question is, did Davis maybe step out of bounds on the sideline? It doesn't look like it. Offside. Defense. Penalty is declined. The result of the play. Touchdown. I, I don't know why Kinnick is out there. He cannot run. They're asking him to play man coverage against one of the best receivers in the game and he cannot run. So after 229 last week for Gabe Davis he's got two big strikes today and the extra points good. Oh, well Pitts made it easy. Davis is good enough. One time they didn't cover him on the goal line and this time he's running against a guy who can't run. What a great catch. He's got beat by Gabe Davis again and UCF has a 10 point lead. Yeah e either he can't be out there or they can't ask him to play man to man coverage and press. Look he's got a bad hammy look at it. he cannot keep up. He can't run. So you either take him out or you roll him up at the corner to have him out there but you can't ask him to play man coverage particularly against one, one of the best receivers in the game and look what's happened in the second half. You know, yep. Just just the yardage and the inability of Pitt now to move the ball. It's a whole first half for UCF of 159 yards and the six and change to go in the third quarter there they've doubled it. So Pitt gets it back at the 25. Since Pitt fumbled that ball at 541 left in the first half, it's been touchdown, 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 field goal. 31 unanswered points by UCF. We talked about a spark, and UC, UCF got that spark with that fumble. And if you're the college football playoff committee and you're just starting, in your season this is week number four officially of college football of a full slate of games you have to be impressed by sure. the resilience of this UCF team against a power five and you mentioned it a tough opponent in terms of bigger guys faster guys here in the ACC as Maurice French hops into a catch and is ushered out of bounds yeah the fight after being down 21 nothing you know it would have been easy to kind of fold not our day. And instead, they kept hanging in there. They got a spark with that fumble that got them going and gave them the emotional lift that they needed. As we know, UCF just can't afford a not our day. If they're going to have any chance at the playoff, they've got to win out and play the tough schedule. And now a flag comes in on a hit against Pickett. Personal foul, face mask. Defense, number 54. 15 yard penalty automatic. First down. That's on Cam Good, who's the Virginia Tech transfer. Comes in left hand and turns it. Yep, it's a good call. That's one of those that you should prorate it, maybe give him like 22 yards <laughs> for as vicious as that face mask was. But for UCF, unbeaten at 3 0. Trying to beat a second straight power five opponent. We saw him a couple of years ago in a bowl game dismantle Auburn. They lost to LSU last year in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. French jogs down the sideline. And a flag is in again where Pickett was throwing the ball. It's down at the 40. Personal foul. Rough the passer. Defense number 93. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. That's Landon Woodson this time. Seem like they're protecting the quarterbacks a little better today, Rod. Yeah, so it's pretty easy. I know that easy. was a hot topic for you a couple weeks ago. Well, it's a pretty easy call when he grabs the quarterback around the neck, around the helmet. But there's no question, Q, that the NFL does a better job of protecting quarterbacks, maybe to an extreme, you know, than the college guys do. 
Yeah, we've gotten varying opinions on that from college coaches this year, and sometimes it depends on which side of the ball they sit on or played on. Pickett in the car wash gets away from it and a spin beautiful little spin from Pickett and he's got a first down this is a kid that one time in high school played defensive end so there's certainly toughness and a flag comes into joining him down on the field Narduzzi is worried about his quarterback who's drawn now three flags on this drive the way quarterbacks have been dropping in college football you understand why they don't run as much in the NFL the U USC is on their third string quarterback now and that guy was in the pocket. Slogan was in the pocket when he got hit. There's Patty warming up. I think it's a great scrambler. You plug in their tape from week one against Virginia. After the play is over. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Taunting. Defense number 54. After distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Cam Good's having a bad drive. Yeah, that's 30 yards in penalties on this drive by Cam Good. It's like something with his uh, throwing arm. For Pickett. We'll follow him along the sideline. Pickett. He'll get a ball and, and uh, try to work it out here. Could be his hand, elbow, or shoulder. Something with that right arm. So Nick Patty, the redshirt freshman out of Hillsdale, New Jersey, who went to three straight state title games. Well, and Jeff George, the third string quarterback, is in as a wide receiver as well. Two quarterbacks in. It's a run for Carter, and he's to the six. So Nick Patty, redshirt freshman, getting his first run as an FBS quarterback. Going to talk to his offensive coordinator, Whipple. Well, you have to be thinking in terms of who do you trust down here with your quarterback out? You get the ball to French, you get him coming around. Do you trust your quarterback to throw it? I would think you got to get French involved somehow and in something inside inside kind of run. Patty will throw looking for that first touchdown. He gets spun around. Patty eyes downfield. Touchdown. His first. It goes to Butler Jenkins and pitch back on the board. See how amped they were for Patty with his first touchdown pass. What composure he had. He actually had choices out there. So he, he, he rolls to his left and it's a choice of Butler Jenkins as he spins out of this. Now he's got Butler Jenkins and he has French deep. Smart decision to make the shorter throw to Butler Jenkins and what a terrific job of extending the play and keeping his composure. So here comes Pitt. Here comes Pitt. With a little bit of help from UCF being undisciplined and the person of Cam Good with 30 yards and personal fouls on that drive. And a third penalty as well against the defense. So at some point you're teeing up three points. Yeah. So a UCF team that's won back-to-back -back American Conference titles sees the backup quarterback Nick Patty with a high-level football beard. You like that? Oh, great football beard. Baseball mustaches and football beards. <laughs> Killens on the return. He's fast. Killens. Keeps his feet and now goes down at the 29. So 31 28 UCF coming up not long from now. Sam Ellinger and Texas against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. It's Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Wells Fargo and the Big 12. And you'd imagine you're going to see points like this as UCF has gotten to 30 once again. It's the 30th straight game. The Knights have had at least 30 points. 
They've done 40 or more in 18 of those 29 games. Since you're a beard and mustache guy, what's your take on Gundy and his hair? Well, <laughs> his, his kids were trying to get him to cut it. Not going to happen. Down goes Gabriel. Ball is loose. And Schneider got on top of it, it looked like. Kylan Johnson knocked it free. The Gator transfer. Yeah, there's going to be a personal foul for, I think it was a late hit on Gabriel. Flag down at the 28. This game's off the rails all of a sudden. Yeah, guy, right? Guy, guys are losing it mentally. What's going on down there, Q? Uh, everyone's a little tired, quite honestly. It's been hot. After the play was over, dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 34. 15-yard penalty automatic. First down. That is number 31st. First unsportsmanlike foul. It's not a mere watch. Yeah, and, and this is silly. It's, you know, you're 300 pounds. You're going to take a shot at a 180-pound quarterback who's trying to get up? And they're going to see you. No, no, nobody's watching. Yeah, right. Who could possibly <laughs> see me here? The big guy on top of the quarterback. <laughs> well, Amir Watts had a huge sack for Pitt against Duke and Daniel Jones, the new quarterback for the New York Giants. But that was not as sterling of a play. Would have been second down and 19. Instead, it's first and 10. Gabriel flares it out and incomplete. He wanted McCray out of the backfield. Let's see if this slows down the tempo. UCF has been at its, at its best when it's gone right back. Now they're a little bit more deliberate with the incomplete pass. Pitt secondary with all sorts of injuries. Damari Mathis and Pinnock both out of the game and her freshman Marcus Williams who's 5'8", 170, 14 in blue. Looking for Davis, an incomplete. Paris Ford, one of the last guys standing in that defensive backfield, was near him. Well, Q, the other change is that those injuries have taken Pitt out of the man-to-man -man coverage. More zone. So what do you do if you're UCF seeing that zone? Well, the right thing is to attack the inside of it where it's soft, but you got to be accurate. The Florida kids are coming up big for Pitt. Oh, they are beating the guards and center inside. It's been a theme all night. You see it inside. Here he comes, number five, right at you. He just blows right by the guard and gets in there. Nothing quiet about this game right now. No. It is loud. French back to receive. And he's going to watch it roll and roll and roll toward the goal line and into the end zone. UCF watched it roll. Wow. Had a chance to pin him. They had a great opportunity to pin Pitt right inside. I think they just assumed that the ball was going to stop. Going to the studio, Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Jason. Let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances in Justice Fields' day. His day is done, accounting for six touchdowns in one quarter. So backup QB, Chris Chuganoff to Garrett Wilson, who makes the incredible grab. Buckeyes have scored 63 unanswered, a big against Miami of Ohio. Jason Rob, back to you. Yeah, I don't know you want to play Ohio State right now. After no. what they did to Indiana nope. and now Miami. Nope. Ooh, doctor. French usher to the sideline. Another flag is in. Relatively penalty free first half has caught up to us. Yeah, but a lot of the penalties have been, you know, the unsportsmanlike conduct type. Holding offense number 10. 10 yard penalty repeat. First down. That is the second time Greg has been flagged for holding. No lineman or tight end ever believes he held, and every defensive lineman thinks he was held on every play. Of course. One of the laws of football. First down and 20 for Pitt. 
Patty remaining in at quarterback, and he is driving across the 20 yard line. A little moxie from Patty, the reserve quarterback. Well, they've had success letting the quarterback scramble. That was a design quarterback run. Don't know if Pickett is going to get back, but Patty's got to have high confidence now. There's Pickett after having thrown a touchdown pass. Second down and ten. Patty clears the pocket again. Patty on the roll off the comeback and a battle for it on the sideline. And let's see what the call is. Yeah, he threw that into a crowd. Incomplete is the official word. Grant along with Butler Jenkins and nobody came away with it. Yeah, he was fortunate. That was not a great decision because there were two white jerseys, one blue jersey. Look at this throw. Look at the guys who are there. He's lucky that was not picked, and it looked like Grant might have come up with it initially. It did, Rod. I'm about 10 yards away from that spot. It looked like that was a clear interception, but the pit receiver does a great job to wrestle it away and, and to contest that ball. Yeah, Grant lost it, Q, on the way down. It hit the ground. Pickett trying to get loose and ready, see if he can get back in the game, taking some warm-up tosses. And now that may give him some more time to work on the sideline Pitt as they'll stop the first it. Short time out of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Pitt will stop the play with a timeout. Pat Narduzzi talking to his staff, trying to see if his quarterback can get back in. Time to take a look at our college football rankings. They're brought to you by Allstate. How do you think Clemson Charlotte's going to go? Huh. As, as well as Alabama Southern Miss. Yeah. <laughs> Tight. I just wonder where you put UCF. You know, I, somewhere in that top 10, they probably belong if they win this game. Certainly ahead of Utah, who lost to USC. You know, are they better than Auburn right now? I think their offense is better. I think Auburn's defense is better. Auburn doesn't want to hear anything about UCF after a couple of years ago down in Atlanta. Oh, oh contraire. Now, now they want to play. Yeah, them. bring up. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the problem. Josh Heupel says is nobody, nobody will play him. Well, Danny White, the AD, said the same thing. Mac breaking free, and he's got a first down. Well, Danny White, the AD, ha has a a problem. You know, you're not in a po in a position to dictate that scheduling. You go in and you say, I'll play you at your place if you play me at my place. As Pickett comes back in, there's no incentive for a top team to do that. So you may have to, you know, play that two for one, two at their place, one at your place, or do what Boise State did years ago, play an opening game against a big-time opponent. His argument back would be we got to have home games somewhere. We have a great atmosphere at home. we got to have home games, and those two-for-ones start to add up. Well, that's what the other guys are for. You're not going to get the big-time guys. Not everyone's going to fall for that track <laughs> trip like Stanford did. And that's probably the last time he'll get someone you know, who's in a hunt for something to agree to do a home and home like that. There's no upside. Regardless, so I think we can both agree that it's good for college football to have an upstart. Absolutely. Like UCF doing the damage that it's doing is pick it back in, steps up, lost the ball, still free. And let's see, did Davis, Davis get on it? Yes, yeah, he did. Davis got it. Look, UCF is as good for college football now as Boise State was when they had their run during the BCS era. And everybody wanted to see Boise State bust the BCS. So it's great for college football, and we need this discussion, and we need new blood. But they got to earn it, too. They're trying to right here. They were down 21, love. UCF has come back to take the lead, and we have a wonderful fourth quarter. College football returns after this first three quarters. Where you been? We need a Pacific Life game summary. Big splash plays everywhere. Dylan Gabriel, a couple of touchdowns, Kiss 335 total yards, but the comeback is on for UCF. Once Pitt turned it over late second quarter, UCF got their momentum going. So what will it take with Kenny Pickett back in for Pitt for a Panther comeback and a shock of undefeated UCF? Receiver fell. Was he guided there? It's incomplete for Matthews. And it's fourth down. Pickett says, where is the flag? He got tangled up with Hayes. 
Their feet got tangled. Good no call. You know he's gone from a picket fence reference to a picket line as he protests the non call here at Heinz Field. Directional punt necessary here. Anderson returned one in the third quarter 87 yards a thing of beauty. There's your directional punt kicking away from Anderson and well done by Chris Dulu. Good call Q. So Dylan Gabriel freshman quarterback Mililani High School in Hawaii same high school that provided Ma Tanuvasa the former Denver Bronco defensive lineman but also Mackenzie Milton freshman quarterback in a, a negative environment really for the first time. Yeah and yeah. he's the guy who replaced Milton in high school replaces him here after that horrific knee injury to Milton last season and Milton's been mentoring him palling around with him helping him get prepared for everything and if you're Gabriel right now you're facing a secondary that's down two significant players the freshman 14 Williams is out there on the right side he's a guy that you should be looking at run for Anderson you know we saw Milton we saw Gabriel and we asked the coaching staff are you on the next quarterback from Hawaii and they said absolutely we're asking Dylan and McKenzie and we've got a guy that we're looking at well they had an inside guy to get <laughs> Gabriel for Gabe Davis who's tackled immediately by Dane Jackson the senior DB one of the last remaining corners available for Pitt with all the injuries and a big third down there's the guy there's the guy you should be looking at you got a, a third string freshman out there who's 5'8 170 instead they run it and Anderson can't pick his way to the line to gain. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get this. You know, th this is a game of matchups. All games are games of matchup. And you've got a an inexperienced corner out there against one of your top receivers. And he's a foot taller. And he's nervous. Trust me. Been there. Got to be, right? Yeah. So you got to you got to take shots at that. Josh Heifel was not very happy on the sideline with the way that drive went. French on the move. Maurice French held on to across the 40 yard line. Pitt will have good field goal uh, field position on a net of 26. Pitt Panthers that they'd rather have back. Well they mentally fell apart and a lot of it had to do with Pinnock's injury. They didn't cover Davis down on the goal line because Pinnock was coming out and then met Pinnock in man to man coverage when he can't run against a top receiver made no sense and then they lost their mind and started picking up personal fouls with late hits and yet they're only down three as Pickett in the offense embarks here with Vincent Davis the freshman needling his way across the 50 yard line nice run from Davis yeah they, they really haven't run the ball well in the second half only 40 yards prior to that run and they may have to incorporate a little bit of the passing game to the backs out of the backfield if they don't get more rushing. Davis again passed Evans to the outside and he did find the corner on a first down so Vincent Davis the native of Fort Lauderdale playing against UCF he had the first state title in high school history at Cardinal Gibbons High School down in Fort Lauderdale but he had to come all the way north to play FBS football. Pick it down the middle and that is batted wow. incomplete there's a flag down Gowan got in looks like another late hit on Pickett. How many is that on UCF personal fouls late hits. Uh, they're just fanning the flames at this point. It, it, uh, unbelievable. I understand the frustration but you know Hayes Hayes knows better. But why be frustrated you're you're leading you've come back and it's it's the ball gets out and he was right there he wants to take the hit. You got to ease up and you know and it's just it's the right call we should be doing a better job of protecting quarterbacks at the collegiate level it's a good call fourth this half as Pickett 
off his back foot and no comeback available for Mack against Clark. Second down. You think Pinnock is going to be a little sore tomorrow? Oh, yeah. A lot of these guys are going to be sore tomorrow. And look, Kenny Pickett has taken a lot of hits. We mentioned in high school there's one game he played defensive end and that was because there was an option team on the other side. He told us it was basically all game long he was picking up the fullback and just ramming heads with the guy <laughs> and he looked at the guy at the end of the game and was like why, why are we doing this? What what is being made of this? Pick it with a dart for just a couple of yards and third down coming up as Robinson drives through on the tackle. Pickett's also logged a lot of miles. 50 yards per play. It's 25 over to the offensive coordinator and 25 back. That's Times right. how many plays? Do the yeah. math. Yeah, he's got to be the one guy who's not in favor of this walkover concept where he's got to go see Mark Whipple, the offensive coordinator, after each play and then get back to the field. We joke, but it, it, this piles up in a game of 60 minutes. Yeah. Remember, Pitt missed a field goal earlier. And so they are in range, but the question is, what is the range right now? Pickett got it away to French, and it'll be fourth down and a couple of yards. So Pat Narduzzi has a fourth down and a field goal opportunity to tie the game. He had fourth and goal last week, didn't go for it. He's going to kick here for the tie. I think he's reluctantly going for this because I don't get the feeling he's got great confidence in his kicker right now. He did miss one earlier. That should have been an automatic one. This is from 41 for Kessman, who's missed four times already this year in four games. Kessman sends it wide again. Yeah. He's missed from 41 and from 35. I don't think there's going to be much choice in decision making on fourth down going forward today for Narduzzi, but that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm still going to need you. And he may in a three point game. Right now. Yeah, I, I don't think it's possible this year. I don't think the schedule works for them. What they would need with this higher bar, they need Stanford and they need Pitt to win their conferences. First down catch, so second down coming up. I mean, the, the counter argument there is UCF has done everything that you've asked. They've gone out and scheduled a couple of Power Five teams. They've beaten everybody in the regular season the last couple of years. And you'd, you'd love for, I mean, just as a fan of somebody who watches the NCAA basketball tournament, you'd love to have that upstart in there to create an upset. I, I get it. I understand it. But that's not what we have. That's not the current system. The bar is higher for the group of five guys. Think of it in business terms. This is the way the power five look at it. Let's catch the play. It's a third down. Gabriel, the freshman, down the sideline. He uncorks for Nixon. Trey Nixon. You have to love the route by Nixon. He looks like an outfielder. He put his head down and started running, and then in the last five, seven yards, looked up to find the ball. Beautiful. Gabe Davis had one guy to beat, a little stiff arm, and then they collaborate on the tackle. You were saying? The point was, a founder of a, of a company feels like, hey, they took all the risk, you know, they should get most of the profit. They sort of laid the foundation. And that's kind of the power of five. And so for any group of five, they say, you, you're in this late. You don't get the same benefit that we get. And that's what they all signed on to. So a higher bar for a group of five, like a late stage investor, if you will. I understand the point. And UCF's argument is you keep moving the bar on us. We played Stanford. We played Pitt now. We've beaten Auburn. How much do we have to do? And the answer seemingly is not enough. But we love talking to the yeah. couple of players we chatted with because they absolutely do have a little bit of an underdog feel, but they also didn't really want to talk about it. They right. said, we're going to go win the games and you do whatever you do. I'll tell you what you do. On third down, Gabriel under duress. Gabriel has a chance to run for it. And he pops it overhead. Incomplete for Hescock. Yeah. He, he might have been better off tucking it and picking up that first down. But what I was going to say was they need to schedule a week one opponent.
take one of the top five or six teams. We'll do it at ESPN, right? This is the most to see player. Player. Schedule one of the big boys that a perennial winner opening week, beat them, and you'll get some real serious pub. Watts is down. Fourth and two Time when we come back. Thirty-one twenty-eight, fourth and two. Do you go for it here? I mean, Pitt doesn't seem to want to kick field goals again. Yeah, you kick a field goal, it's still a one-possession game. And considering how aggressive you are by in your DNA, you go for this. You get a touchdown. You get the first down and a touchdown. You, you might put this away. I like a quarterback run here. You got to treat this like it's deep in the red zone. They showed that earlier this year. Agreed. And Q, don't forget that matchup we talked about. You've got Davis at 6-3 up top against a small corner up there. They send Hescock in motion. A lot of signals, a lack of action. Fourth down. McCray, stonewalled by Pitt and Jones. A straight run on fourth and two. Our crunch time brought to you by Cheese. It just happened. And this was an all out blitz by Pitt. You see it from the field. They brought the backers and the strong safety that way. There was not a hole anywhere for McCray. I'm surprised they went that way. I thought they'd give Gabriel an option to throw. I like the matchup on the outside with Davis at 6 3. But instead, they thought they could run it inside there, and Pitt, Pitt was reading their playbook. And the former Oklahoma quarterback, Josh Heupel, runs it on fourth down, and Pitt gets the ball just across the 10 with Kenny Pickett, who's back in after going out with an injury. And a wobbly pass is incomplete for Griffin Stewart, second down. Yeah, it's wearing on him. Pickett looks a little bit off. That was, that was deflected. Oh, was, it, was it cute? Yeah, okay. Yeah, hands up. Just got a piece. He does look quite, kind of weary, though, as you watch him, you know, run back and forth from the sideline there. He looks a little winded. Remember, he got his first start in 2017 against Miami in a game that really hurt the Hurricanes late in the season. Pickett for Mack, and he tripped against Clark. Navelle Clark, the senior, has had a very nice day. Yeah. Yeah, he's played well out there. It's a valid point about Pickett, though, Rod. He is clearly not as sharp. Grass-stained pants, the shoulder injury earlier. He's taken a lot of hits. He's done a lot of running. Yeah, that first throw might have been tipped. That last one was just off, way off. I'm surprised they haven't thrown to the backs more, you know, on the early downs. Pickett down the middle incomplete. Yeah, he, off again. He, he's got to be tired and a little beat up, and the accuracy is off. He talks about his feet. When his feet are underneath them, he's accurate. Well, he had his feet underneath them, and he tried to go backside with it, and he didn't give it enough air for his receiver to adjust to it. There you see Whipple's all over. All over him on it. When Mark Whipple was leaving the room when we had our meetings yesterday with him, Kenny Pickett was walking in. We said, what's the key for your quarterback? He said, feet, feet, and feet. Yep. Chris Dulu will punt to Anderson, who's already scored on a punt. Again to the sideline and a long haul for Anderson, who fair catches inside the 40-yard line. 8.07 to go. Oklahoma State at number 12, Texas, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. We'll see if the Longhorns can break that streak against Oklahoma State. Thirty-one twenty-eight UCF with the lead here and the Knights have the ball trying to get that put away score if they can Pitt does have two timeouts but the question is a pit offense that stagnated some what do they have left yeah and they're putting so much pressure on Pickett to make plays for them now and they've got to find a way to take some of that pressure off of him drop that game by itself 
is, isn't working. He's too winded, too tired. Prior to the play clock expiring, UCF takes their first charge sign out of the half. This is a we thank you for joining timeout. us. If you've been watching BYU and Washington, the Huskies a big win. UCF here has taken a 31-28 lead over Pitt, but if you tuned in, you're flipping channels earlier and you saw Pitt 21-0, you just kind of saw it out of the corner of your eye, you were right. Pitt was in total control of this game against unbeaten UCF which has won 25 straight regular season games. But UCF had a flurry late second quarter, early third quarter, including a punt return for a touchdown. And the story really is the yards per half. First half was all pit, second half UCF has owned it. Yeah, we had a flurry in that third quarter where Pitt sort of fell apart mentally making a number of mistakes and didn't do anything with the football, only 120 yards in the second half and then uh, for, for UCF, Davis came alive, two touchdown catches, sort of left alone a couple of times for easy throws. Gave Davis 130 yards, a couple of touchdowns for UCF, which is only holding one loss in the last couple of seasons as Paris Ford makes the tackle. Second down coming up for the Knights. Yeah, the, the, the trouble inside rushing for UCF has continued. Dylan Gabriel, the freshman, to Nixon down the sideline. Another deep ball and incomplete. Well, he was out there. He had him. He was by himself. This time he beat Coleman. Coleman is in now for the freshman, Williams. Pitt has lost two regular defensive bats. And when UCF sees it, they tend to pick on it now. Wheeler, the fullback, cheerleading on the sideline. Now the freshman Williams is back in at the corner. Gabriel, pocket was collapsing, and he fires a bullet for Nixon right at the line to gain. We'll check the spot. It looks like they're going to short him about half a yard. It's going to be fourth down. The question is, when did he have control of the football, and where was his forward progress? Remember, Josh Heupel does not have a challenge. Yeah. It is fourth down. Yeah, this is a risky go for it here. Rod, I thought he might have had the first down where he caught that ball. And this is a risky fourth down. You're up three. I think I would kick this one away. If you don't get this, think of the life you give Pitt and a short field. Previous play. Yeah, it's under review. A runner short of the line to gain is under further review. Now, they picked on Williams, the freshman, the corner. They went right after him. But again, it's it's where was the ball caught? Where was his progress stopped? When he has control of the football. So he's at that marker or remember, just shy of it. Remember, the yellow line is not exact. Not official, yeah. It's an estimation. So remember, you need indisputable, indisputable video evidence to overturn the mark on the field. Is there enough evidence to say this is a first down catch for UCF? A lot of time left, so it's not the game, but it's certainly important. Yeah, his own momentum brings him down. He goes up to catch the ball, so he doesn't get the benefit of being in the air. See, he comes back down. It looks like he's, what, that's about the 48? Yeah, I, I, let's see if we can tell aerially here. When he's down on the ground, where is the ball? And it looks like he's probably yeah, he's a little probably bit. somewhere in around that 47 and a half or so. And, you know, they marked it at the 47 and about a foot. So he's in the air. He comes down. I, I don't have enough to say that's a bad mark. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It is fourth down. Yeah, agreed. That's the right call. Yep. It was also worth it to stop the game and look at it. It's that close on a possible fourth or first down. 
Now you got to punt, though. I think you have to punt. I, I, I don't think you take this risk. You don't have to. You're up three. You punt it, keep the pressure on Pitt. Don't take the risk of giving them a short field. But hey, UCF, Hypo, they're going to roll the dice here. It's great if you get it, but if you miss this, oh man. The only reason I say you got to punt is your defense has done very well for you. Fourth down and one. McCray the tailback. And McCray has the first down, so UCF does get the line to gain and moves the sticks. Oof. One for two on those uh, fourth down calls there. Living on the edge. Yep. Pitt fans don't want to see any more fourth and ones go the wrong direction after last week. Be wary of a shot here on first down after a fourth down conversion. That's a pattern that you see from a lot of offensive coordinators. Well, Q, they've been getting behind these DBs most of the second half. Play action. Gabriel down the seam and batted away incomplete. Jacob Harris, the intended target. Harris Ford has been pretty effective as, as one of the last men standing in that defensive backfield. Yeah, they've lost Pinnock and Mathis. They're going with mostly the freshman Williams, who's 5'8 at one corner, and occasionally getting Coleman in there, number four, bigger corner. Now, the guy that Pitt hasn't had an answer for is in the slot right there, the six foot five inch Harris. Gabriel fading away for Nixon again. Trey Nixon beats his man. Yeah, they're running by him. You've got third string corners in there, and Nixon has consistently run by guys and come up with it. Man, his hands are good. Jones got in there too and affected the pass. Ole Miss transfer makes another big catch. The flag has come in on the McRae run. We're under six to go. Unbeaten UCF up three. So here's holding offense number 72. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. Here, here's the thing. You don't play man coverage when your guys can't play man coverage. And UCF has consistently run by the defensive backs in man coverage. Not surprising that you're because your two better guys are out of the game. So you got to help them. You got to play a little bit more zone. And instead, Nixon keeps feasting for UCF. First down and 20 off the penalty. Well, this has been proven that Nixon is going to run by guys who do press coverage on him. Down here. He's done that three times already this half. Gabriel loads it up again down the sideline and that is incomplete. Incomplete out of bounds. There's a flag in. We'll yeah. check the marker. That was Harris, six foot five and out of bounds. It's a little crisscross route on the outside with Davis and Harris. There's no foul for pass interference. It is third down. Question, correction, it is second down. So second down and 20 because of the penalty on Jordan Johnson, the center for UCF, who I knew drew your attention this week, Quint. He's a 320 pound vegan. And it's that's hard to comprehend. I mean, how much vegetable tofu and beans do you have to eat to maintain a 320 pound physique? How is that even possible? How can you play football and not eat meat? He says he feels a lot better based on recovery considering his new diet. Gabriel again wants the sideline ball and this time right at the edge for Harris and he's out of bounds one more time. A very smart play by Hamlin the safety using the sideline to his benefit. Watch him sort of back Harris to the corner. Left foot out. Right foot. Doesn't matter. I, I'm just, I'm surprised that we haven't seen Pitt drop off in coverage and let their guys have their eyes on the quarterback. I know they want to get pressure on Gabriel, but their guys are not holding up in man-to-man -man coverage. 
They rush five. Gabriel gets it away, and he's got it down to the 11-yard line for Davis. So now on fourth down coming up in a three-point game with Pitt a little hazy on field goals. Do you go for it? Well, you did before, so you might as well now, right? You didn't go for it there just to settle for a field goal down here. Looks Unless like you did. <laughs> Unless you do. So fourth and seven, they're not going to go. Barnes will kick, but again, there's a chance Pitt doesn't want to kick a field goal anyway, and they're right. going to go for more touchdowns than they would have otherwise based on the scenario. So we'll see if Barnes can knock it through. And he does, so UCF has taken a six point lead. Unbeaten UCF, 34 to 28. Pitt will get it when we. So White Sox fans could care less, you're they, saying? They, they may care less. Cubs are on a little bit of a losing streak, though. Brewers have surpassed him in the NL Central. We'll see in the final week of the Major League Baseball season. I'm waiting for you to mention the Oakland A's. Leaders in the AL Wild Card, your guys. Into the end zone it goes, and French going to take it out. Trailing by six. Maurice French almost in slow motion gets it to the 21-yard line. So 431 to go. What does this possession look like for Pitt? Well, the drop back game by itself is putting too much pressure on Pickett. He's been a little bit off. I think they, they have to switch it up, whether that is going to the run game or throwing to Davis out of the backfield, screen game, something to help take the pressure off a of picket. And then once they do that, then you got to get Mac back involved, number 11. But you can't simply ask Pickett to drop back and find the guy. He, he's been beat up, knocked around. His last series, his accuracy was off. So make it easy for him right now. Vincent Davis is the tailback. And he gets the opening carry of this drive and swerves past the 30 yard line in the arms of Nate Evans. That's a good start. Take some pressure off your quarterback. Make it a little bit easier. Let other guys step in and help him out some. UCF trying to stay undefeated and keep that championship dream alive. Wanting to keep pounding down the door of that college football playoff. Another run and a first down for Davis, pinballing to the 37. Well, they were hunting linebackers and did a really good job of getting on Evans that time so that he couldn't get involved in the play. Evans is the leader of that defense and he's got great speed and can chase things down. When you block him, you got a chance. Pickett climbing the pocket. Over the middle, got French. It's a first down for Pitt, just short of midfield. Yeah, a little high throw left French hanging out there where he took a big hit. You see that accuracy is still a little bit off for Pickett. Officials timeout for injured player. So French is up, but hobbling. He's wide open, see his ball's high. He exposed his man, and Hayes took full advantage of giving him a shot. Maurice French, such a dynamic player, but also just a dynamic kid. We really enjoyed our time that we spent with him during the week. Uh, Maurice French, when Pitt came to recruit him at his high school in New Jersey, he wanted to stand out. So he wore neon green gloves and tights and cleats and just about everything else neon green. He stood out so much, Pitt offered him. And then once a year, every year, his high school has a neon green game to celebrate what a presence he was back home. Greg the tight end in the flat and Greg drags a man for a first down. That's that was what we were talking about. A little short passing game takes some pressure off of Pickett but what you said about French makes a whole lot of sense. I mean he was a star there and that that neon outfit lives on at his old high school. Yeah, they loved him there. New Brunswick High School. His basketball coach was actually the brother of NFL receiver Mohamed Sanu, who we learned a lot from. Pickett steps up, feels the rush. Pickett tucks and he slides. And a great decision by Hayes, number 11. He didn't take a shot, would have been flagged. 
He saw that Pickett was sliding. That's a really smart play just to walk away. UCF needs some fresh legs on this D line right now. They're getting no kind of explosive pass rush. The only rush there was on the second chance from Charlton late in the play as Pickett's high again Rod it's third down. And this Pitt fan base needs to take a couple of deep breaths after the close loss last week against Penn State and a final drive here with two timeouts. Yeah Pickett is just hanging in there fighting through this he's been beat up he's tired he's winded you know like a pitcher who loses accuracy because they're laboring I mean all his throws are off his fundamentals have started to fail him a little bit and he's just doing what he can to get the ball out. He's got to be hurting after the way he's been knocked around today. He was out for a couple of drives. Patty came in and threw a touchdown pass. Pickett on the move again. Pickett is high once again. He had a first down with Griffin Stewart and he missed the target. So fourth down and five with two timeouts and an injured UCF player back at the 42. Yeah, you know, Pickett's trying, Timeout. and that looks like for injured player. Yes, yeah. So now fourth and five, two timeouts. You got to go here. You don't have any choice. Now Pat Narduzzi caught a lot of flack for that fourth down and goal. He decided to kick the field goal, which was missed he last was, week. He was down 17-10. Yep. Penn State, five minutes to go on the one yard line, and he elected to go for the field go after they didn't get in on the first three tries he told us look they ran their their goal line plays that they thought would work and they couldn't execute them so it appeared he didn't have a lot of confidence in running a third or fourth choice play that they didn't like that they hadn't run anything effectively anyway instead of what would be a gimme field goal and I think if he had you know said publicly hey yeah I'm aware of the analytics I get it but I'm looking out there and my team can't execute so I'm going to take the three points and then come back later. Well, the analytics didn't like it because the analytics said according to FPI you have about a 41 percent win probability if you get the touchdown it's around 14 percent if you make the field goal 11 percent if you get nothing but Narduzzi's point is we weren't doing anything right. Yeah. Well here drive. here he's got to do something right. He's got to give Pickett an option to use his legs if he doesn't find the pass that he wants. You got French there in the backfield and now he motions out. Fourth down for Pitt and movement at the line for UCF. And they'll blow it dead. Pickett hit Mack. The play is blown dead. There was contact at the line. Uh -huh. That's Defense it. Defense number 13. That five yard penalty results in a first down. It's the contact that blew the play dead. Otherwise, the play could have continued. Please reset the game clock to 2-11. 2-11 on the game clock, please. Thank you. Now, the other thing that could stop the play, even if there's not contact, if the lineman moves reacts once the it. defensive yep. lineman moves into the neutral zone, if the offensive line reacts, that can also blow it dead. So first down for Pickett, the junior quarterback for Pitt. From the 30, Pickett down the middle. He has Mack just outside of the 10. Well, the matchup you like, you've got him in the slot working against Grant, the safety. That is a mismatch. You don't want the safety covering a fleet-footed receiver. They put him in the slot, and they got the matchup they wanted. Number 11 went quiet for about two quarters, but Mack has returned here in the fourth. Designed run for Pickett. And he rummages for a couple, hit high by Mitchell. Second down, they can get a first down inside the two. And there's no reason for them to rush or hurry. It's up to UCF to start UCF thinking about timeouts. Takes their second charge, timeout of the half. And there it is, just this as is you a said. Second timeout. So Josh Heupel's playing two games essentially right now. Get the stop, but also make sure you have some time if you don't. Exactly. So what's at stake here for UCF? 
reputationally is can you go on the road and beat a power five opponent this season and keep that unbeaten streak alive. And if you do not defeat Narduzzi and this team UCF can forget about all the talk about the playoff and where they deserve to be and respect and all that they have to hold on here in order to keep that narrative alive. But if they do win a whole lot of people and rightfully so will say yep. all they do is win yep. they should really have an elevators chance to get into the college football playoff. That is a fun bunch from Orlando on their heels right now second down and six. Pickett over the middle bat it away. What Tay a play. Gowan. What a play by Gowan. He was beaten inside this ball if it's thrown out in front is a touchdown but because it wasn't in front that gave Gowan an opportunity to get his hand in watch here if that ball's in front it's a touchdown it's behind and Gowan makes the play. What Terrific an effort. job. Pickett steps up Pickett touch the ball and he's inside the five another fourth down and short in the fourth quarter from Pitt rapping on the door. Do you call a timeout if you're Pitt to make sure you've got the right play that you want for the game essentially. Yeah it looks like they are going to call a timeout coach Narduzzi walking down the left sideline towards uh, the official. But if you do that which they're going to if you do that and don't get this you are done. Yeah. If you kept the second time out you would have had a puncher's chance. UCF takes a third. But if, charge if you get half. it. If you get this it. This is a 30 second time out. If you get it you still have the opportunity to clock it and stop the clock yep. if you don't get in. UCF. UCF called a timeout oh, rather than Pitt, which is the interesting seconds. part of this. Yes. Thank you. So 59 seconds, two timeouts. It's not necessarily over for Pitt no, if no, they correct. don't score or get a first down. I thought Pitt had called that timeout to take a good hard look at the play they wanted. Instead, it's UCF trying to preserve some time on the clock. Should they give up the point here? Well, for Josh Heupel who's 15 and one for UCF he's trying to hang on to this unbeaten season. What does Pitt call last week in the red zone against Penn State missed assignments not all 11 guys doing their job whether it was a chip on a defensive end uh, an interior block it's got to be all 11 guys that's what they've worked on all week this game comes down to this play. Q you have to assume if you're Pitt you're going to get pressure. You're going to get five or six guys coming. So it's probably going to have to be fast. And if it's fast, you may have to have your tight end be available. I would assume that Mac number 11 is the preferred receiver, but he's probably going to get a lot of attention down here. French is on the bench. Surprised to see that. UCF's perfection is dangling on a fourth down and three. Davis. Matthews got it. Pickett caught it, and Pitt ties the game. What creativity! Who goes trickeration on the goal line? With the game hanging in the balance. Boise State a few years ago. But otherwise, my goodness, how about that? Pick it on the receiving end. Kessman has missed two field goals, but not this one. Look at the smile for that kid. And the mob. Adamitis his snapper right in his face and Pitt has put UCF on the edge to do all of that ball handling on the goal line is very risky especially if you're expecting blitz they go they fake this into the wildcat there's one toss and now you've got Matthews throwing to your quarterback wow wow Look, it looks exactly like Philly special down the road and Davis almost lost that ball. You've got a snap 
you've got a toss and a pass. I mean, you really have to, whoa, you got a lot of confidence that, to call a play like that. Six seconds now, and no timeouts for UCF and its unblemished record. Uh, Narduzzi and Whipple, with calls like that, they should be on a plane to Vegas. Wow. Killens into the end zone, and he'll let it roll. So 56 seconds. UCF can win with a field goal, but the regular season win streak is on the line. 27 straight non-bowl games. Last time they lost one of those was November of 2016 to Quinton Flowers in Willie Taggart's last game as the USF head coach. Now, 56 seconds is enough time to get into field goal range if you use the sidelines and if you get first downs. You can't throw short and have the clock continue to run. You pick up a first down, the clock will stop, and it gets you a, ch a chance. Freshman quarterback, Dylan Gabriel. Pressure and down he goes. Can't Patrick have Jones again. Look at that defensive line. Jones has had a whale of a game. Twyman 97 has also had a whale of a game. They've been dominant inside. Mackenzie Milton's been teaching Gabriel a lot as he prepared him for this. Gabriel tipped and incomplete. It was up there in the ether off the hand of Harris, and it's third and 13. And they have a ways to go. You probably have to get down to the 35-yard line to have a shot at a game-winning field goal. That's a good 35-plus yards away. Barnes's career long is 43. He has hit from 42 today. Heupel's got 11 to snap, and rarely does the play clock become a factor for UCF. Gabriel, third down. The walls collapse again. And down he goes. It is Jalen Twyman, the outstanding sophomore. Well, complain, no need to complain about a prevent defense. Pat Narduzzi has not come off the gas. He's brought five. He brought four. There's an injured pit player with seven seconds and a fourth and 22. It is Twyman. Special timeout for injured player. Fifth in the nation in sacks per game. Jalen Twyman. Please reset the game clock to nine seconds. Quint, you spent time with we'll that young man, Twyman, and he just had the biggest play of this game for Pitt's defense. Uh, you know, he grew up in a rough area of Washington, D.C., and his mom, Stephanie, his biggest fan and a great cook. Coach Narduzzi said when he visited, made the home visit to Jalen's house in his career, it was the best food he's ever eaten, fried shrimp, mac and cheese. He showed up at 315. He's cut himself down to 285, and he's off to a great start this season. Well, he's been a big difference in this game, Q, and right now he's got his defense set up where they can play prevent. Probably time for one play, and the safeties are playing back 20, 25 yards. It would have to be a very immaculate reception for UCF. Caught initially by Davis, then Nixon, McCray's driven down, 